Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of what if Naruto joined Anu Black Ops after Academy. If you enjoy the video then like share and subscribe and also comment your thoughts as it inspires me to make more such videos and remember to check out my playlist section for other interesting stories. So let's get started. Chapter 7. Border Between Konoha and River Naruto exhaled to keep from killing two of his comrades. Sasuke and Sakura's ability to work together had diminished to almost non-existent within the span of three days. After Sasuke made the first remark, the Uchiha continued to do so with increasing viciousness, only this time aimed at both the team and the mission. This is pointless. I could be training, not waiting here to trade some pieces of paper. Sasuke said arrogantly. His attitude went sour and Ego took a hit when Sakura decked both him and Sai during an argument last night. To save face the boy was no acting like a petulant child. Suck it up you jerk, Sakura growled. Sakura Haruo would never have treated her beloved that way but ever since Hikaru began her medical training the girl took off her rose-tinted glasses and actually saw both her teammates. The verdict. Both were assholes, though Sai was just clueless, while Sasuke was the child who had to have his way. Sure, he was improving over time, but this mission reverted him back to his bad habits. Both of you. Just. Please shut up. We're on a mission, and I don't want to be the one to explain to the council why Konoha now appears bad to our supplier of rice. Naruto rubbed his temples. Both now fueled their ire to him. What the hell Naruto? He slash she started it. The two said simultaneously. Ugly and dickless are childish, Sai pointed out. Naruto looked deep within himself. Karama. What should I do? You're asking me. I told you days ago to just kill them and be done with it especially the Uchiha. Sighing annoyance he let the Kitsune's bad advice go. WWDD what would Dragon do? He pondered and then tossed out Dragon's obvious choice of personal hell disguised as training can't do that on a mission. Tenzo's method of fish eyes and creepy lighting weren't possible for Naruto either. Finally he settled on bribery. If you three can act professional until we return to Konoha and I mean no fighting or bickering I will teach each of you something. Sasuke, I'll let you copy some of my Teijutsu moves, Sakura, I'll show you the one Genjutsu I know and Sai. How about I just give you some of my Chakra Smoke tags? Each of the Genin looked thrilled in their own ways. HN. Fine. Sasuke rolled his eyes. He'd do anything for more training even play nice with useless teammates. For now, anyway. Yes, Captain Sai quipped blandly. As Ruth the pale boy was accustomed to following a superior's orders only his standing mission of killing Sasuke Uchiha in the event of defection would override Naruto's orders in Sai's mind. Fine, but the next person who mocks me becomes my test subject's next lesson with Hikari Sensei Sakura warned. With a quick nod Naruto clapped his hands. Since that's done it's time for me to tell you the real reason behind the mission. Naruto said, bringing three confused looks. You are all aware of the increased activity of rogue shinobi in skirmishes. Naruto stated. Of course Ino said we're prepping for war with somebody though she didn't know who Sakura said. Naruto mentally noted to find out where Ino got her source while not exactly top secret. Genin shouldn't have been aware that war was even a path they were considering right now. As Ami Naruto was in the know though either during or soon after Konoha would be in warfare be it with Suna, Odo, or another country that took advantage of the situation. Yes, but don't go spreading that around as it's too early to confirm or deny that possibility. However, in wartime or times of tense relations ninja villages are unable to splurge on supplies as much and we can't afford to go year by year with food when conflict could make securing supplies impossible. That means today when the representatives and negotiators show up we will make them agree to continue to be our supplier even if another country tries to convince them otherwise. Three confused looks were aimed at him. Make them. Sakura asked. Yes Sakura. There is some fear that River will use this to either up the price or back out of our trade agreement. Don't worry, I'll handle the speaking parts, your team is more of a show of good faith. 
Naruto assured her. The boys looked confused, but Sakura thought it over. Realization dawned on her. Because sending the last Achiha to this proves Konoha wants to put their best foot forward, and trusts River Country enough to send an endangered bloodline to the border. Sasuke looked a little peeved at being used as a show of good faith, but let it go at Naruto's warning glance. Correct. Sasuke will be present, as will Sakura. Sai, I'll need you in the trees on lookout for any trouble. Naruto got three nods in return. What he didn't tell them was that Naruto was the biggest play in the mission. The representative for the rice company originated from Konoha and knew about Naruto's Jinchuriki status. Once he saw the blonde shinobi he think twice about attacking, or attempting treachery, even with the samurai he'd no doubt bring. Once Naruto had read that part in his apartment while packing he'd sent Angel to stay with Hikaru for the week. The Hellcat was strong for her age but if he had to pull a full fight or draw on Kurama's chakra, he couldn't be worrying about his partner she wasn't ready to take part in this type of mission yet. An hour and several traps and station shadow clones later Team 7 and Naruto could sense the approaching party. 10 Samurai 3 official Sai signed, not that anyone but Naruto noticed Genin didn't normally no sign, much to Naruto's chagrin. Good. Keep a lookout be ready for anything he signed back. If worse came to worse, Naruto would have Sai activate the traps and clones while they ran back to Konoha, killing the people from River for breaking ties. By the show of force from River they had to be ready for anything. The negotiators arrive in a fanfare. The man who ran the talks, Raijeko, a distant relative to Hayate perhaps Naruto mused, was looking out of breath from the walk. When he spotted the Achiha he felt his spirits rise at Kanaha's trust, ensuring that the village wanted to continue peacefully and could be manipulated. But when he saw Naruto, Kanaha's Jinchuriki and demon brat he paled to be sent on this meant that his life was forfeit if he attempted any bullshitting or tried to raise prices unfairly like he planned to before if possible. And the worst part. The third's law was absolute and if Rai broke that to warn his associates now or later, Konoha would retaliate full force as well as slaughter him and his family. Gekko sama it is an honor to meet with you about continuous friendship between our two nations. These are my teammates, Sakura Haruo and Sasuke Uchiha. I am Naruto Izumaki, as I'm sure you're aware. Naruto said and bowed deeply, which for a ninja on a mission was a show of good faith. Naruto was proud of himself, the advanced diplomacy books Dragon made him read over the last several weeks worked. Realization hit him like a brick. He planned this all out the bastard. Naruto fumed, though his masked face remained neutral. Rai winced inwardly. By the last statement Naruto knew about his status, meaning the boy likely could use some of the demon's power like legend stated that demon hosts could. Time to play patch up and give Konoha what they wanted. Of course Izumaki-san, I know exactly who you are. It is a pleasure to work with you and your team. These are my associates, Dansa Sam and Hideki Momaki. Rai replied. Over the next hour Rai received strange glances from his convoy. When he offered to double Kanaha's rice supply and small discount in exchange for continued friendship and alliance in conflict, they turned slack jawed. But there was nothing Rai could do, he preferred living and he was the boss second only to the daimyo of River the man also knew about the Kyubi Jinchuriki as he was visiting Konoha to offer aid before the third's law took effect after the attack and took the oath to prevent war with the country. Rai was sure the man would agree that angering Konoha at this point would be suicide. I am happy our negotiations went smoothly, Jeko sama Konoha will send a team to collect the rice and exchange payment in one month. Naruto said cheerfully. Rai nodded quickly while his associates looked agape, but as per orders stayed silent. Of course, Izumaki-san. Tell Hokage-sama it is always a pleasure to do business even if it was unexpected to conduct extensive negotiations here. Rai said with an underhanded meaning, he had expected to use the fact that Konoha was sending just Shinobi this time instead of the negotiator to charge more and then lose the rice shipment in favor of Suna in the upcoming conflict the Keskich told them about. 
by sending their Jinchuriki which had eight more tails than Sun as minus Konoha ensured River was loyal to fire not wind. A sneaky tactic, but it worked. No wonder ninjas ran the world. Just a precaution. After all, my friend in the trees would have had trouble keeping lookout for enemy shinobi wanting to interrupt in an office, Naruto replied airily. Rai gulped as did the rest of his side, though the Konoha shinobi said it as looking after both sides, the message was clear, we were prepared to slaughter you. Ha ha, of course of course. Have a safe trip back. Rai bowed. And you? Naruto bowed back. Oh, and my furry friend had hoped to play together. Perhaps next time? The man went ashen and quickened his pace to get away. On the trip back Sakura and Sasuke watched their temporary leader with fascination. What? Naruto asked them as he was balancing a senbon on his palm an exercise meant to help with the Rasengan's second step. You played them how, Naruto? My brain couldn't keep up with all that went on. And why was he so scared of you? Sakura asked him. Rai looked ready to pee his pants every time Naruto spoke, or looked him in the eye. I really didn't do anything Sakura. I read a lot, and working in the tower means I can play the game somewhat. And as for the second question, I'll tell you when you make Chunin. He said with a glint in his eye that meant drop it. The secret was his to tell, but Naruto didn't think giving one of Kanaha's secrets even one about him to Jenin, especially the Achiha who was still a flight risk. When Sasuke becomes a Chunin it would mean he was no longer at risk of becoming a missing ninja, and as such Naruto would trust him more. Okay, I won't ask then. But I didn't know you read, Naruto. What do you usually read? Was Sakura's response. Naruto looked up from concentrating on his palm, the Senbon was refusing to stay steady. Everything. Though lately my superior is making me read a lot of politics and geography, Naruto said a bit miffed, Dragon had him study not only the manual of treaty codes, but also an advanced geographical guide over fire's landmarks for shinobi. His reasoning was sound and he should know as much as possible and with his shadow clones absorbing mass amounts wasn't difficult, but Naruto still resented the man for swiping his comic collection as collateral. Let's pick up the pace. We can be back in Konoha by tomorrow evening if we push it. Meanwhile, Konoha's Ninja Academy. Drea knew someone hated him why else was he being forced to teach a bunch of 11 and 12 year olds basic fuenjutsu. As he and four clones walked around the field of students he learned his lesson the first day of allowing them to work inside when half the desks melted due to a misspelled matrix Drea dodged explosion after explosion as the kids eagerly put their new skills to the test. Drea sensei. How can I make the explosion bigger? A girl from a civilian family asked. Momo Drea remembered was her name. She picked up the lessons like a fish to water and Drea was about to answer the budding Fuenjutsu user when their teacher appeared. All right, class head back inside for a break. Urka shouted from a safe distance. And don't forget, no Fuenjutsu inside. Yes, Urka sensei. By Drea sensei. The students cheered. Drea slipped the girl a level 1 Fuenjutsu book with a wink, which she returned. As they disappeared, Uruka walked up. The Chunin was covering for their normal teacher while his class was on a field trip with his assistant. Thank you for volunteering, Drea Sama. Being able to create basic storage scrolls and exploding tags will help them in the field, Uruka complimented. It was true most shinobi couldn't afford more than a few tags or one storage scroll at a time resulting in them having to make do. By creating their own it would mean better prepared shinobi during missions. And teaching me how to create them was kind of you as well, Drea Sama. Kanaha's future looks brighter. Drea blushed. A, hey, no problem, Gaki. It's time for research want to join. Drea asked with a lecherous smile. He couldn't act perverted around the kids, but teasing the Chunin who blushed at the suggestion made up for it. I I I can't, Drea Sama Uruka stammered. Somewhere in rice. Kakashi popped his second chakra pill in as many hours, Tenzo on his back bleeding out, and Yu Gao breathing heavily. 
With ragged breaths, while he ran through the trees towards the border, Akashi wondered how it all went to hell. Oh yeah, Akagia happened. Flashback, meeting between Suna and Odo. Kakashi and Tenzo hid among the trees a double-layered genjutsu curtsy of Kakashi's eye concealing them and really, and he should at least have some skill with it at least captain level so of course Kakashi would know it I mean come on, captains are supposed to be well-rounded, not over-specialized like in canon. From the shinobi below, Yugao was across from them in another tree, ready to get the drop on them if needed. Our Keisuke has agreed to meet with Orochimaru. But be warned, Suna won't take any treachery. A Suna Jonin a ranked, named Baki Kakashi remembered said after pleasantries. The Odo Shinobi Akegiya based on the bone sword in hand and physical features, looked bored. Don't threaten my master trash. Orochimaru promises, help us destroy the leaf and your village will prosper. Kakashi sucked in a breath at that. It was true. Suna was deliberating the pros and cons of betraying them, and with their biggest traitor no less. Though, by the look on Baki's face he didn't think it was a good idea either, but followed orders. Plant a seed on the Odo Shinobi. We'll find the base then leave. Kakashi signed, receiving nods from both. After the two departed Kakashi quickly summoned Pakun, and handed him a scroll with the information from the meeting. As the dog took off towards the Anu border patrol Kakashi couldn't stop the feeling they were walking into a trap. Too bad Kakashi was right. Trash like you should come out now. I'll admit you fooled me for a time, but holding a genjutsu while moving is difficult your lives and here the Kaguya says stopping in an open field that gave him the advantage. Abort. Leave now. Kakashi ordered quickly. Kakashi had seen one Kaguya in battle during the Third War and didn't wish to fight one himself, especially when the teen started having black marks covering his skin. The three bolt back through the forest, but it turns into a game of cat and mouse. With them being restricted to using basic jutsu not unique to them, or Konoha, they were easy to pick off. Within minutes Tenzo had been hit through the stomach and shoulder with long bone spikes, while Yugao got a sliced side from one of the Kaguya's finger bullets he could use with frightening ease. Kakashi avoided injury and used six henched mud clones and quick release traps he had set up beforehand in case of pursuit, leading their pursuer away as he hid himself and his injured comrades. After cauterizing Tenzo's stomach wound Kakashi and Yugao took off, pumping chakra into their legs. End flashback. That was 12 hours ago and Kakashi still couldn't rest. His comrade, his koha, was dying on him and Kakashi would be damned if another person died because of him. I've gotten lazy if we survive, I'll have to improve myself the brat shouldn't have been able to see through my genjutsu. Senpai the borders up ahead, Yugao spoke up an hour later, and Kakashi didn't correct her. Tenzo was pale on his back, and wouldn't last much longer. Good he heaved a sigh of relief as their feet touched fire side of the valley. Halt 7 and be dropped down around them, seeing the Kumo headbands and being on guard despite suspecting this was the recon team the Hokage informed them about. When Yugao pulls off a bandage to reveal her tattoo they relax. You guys look like hell what happened? A Captain Hawk asked with worry. Medic first, Akashi managed before passing out from chakra exhaustion and chakra pill poisoning. Taking four of the military-grade chakra pills tended to do that to you. Orochimaru's base. They got away, Orochimaru hissed in annoyance. The trail was lost, where did they come from? Kumo Orochimaru-sama. I captured one mud clone a female one before it dispelled. They were missing Nin looking for sanctuary, but didn't like the thought of you, the teen Kaguya said. He was ticked at himself for failure and made sure to memorize their faces the best he could. He'd find them and kill them. Do you believe them Orochimaru asked. He trusted his pet. The boy was fanatical in his loyalty, but the thought of missing Nin spying on the meeting irked him and sounded too much like Konoha or even Iwa. I am not sure. I will check the bingo books though. Will this change our plans master? Orochimaru pondered for a minute. No. Unless Kabuto finds that Konoha and Sarutobi Sensei was the one to send the ninja Kabuto will find out if that's the case. He is our best spy after all. 
Of course, Okamaru saw Makimamaro bow deep before leaving the snake san into his thoughts. Little did either know that Kakashi, in all his wisdom had based their disguises on three Kumo missing nin that Konoha had picked up. And he had no way of knowing that that their corpses would be planted by weeks and to be picked up by Odo's patrol schedule that Drea's toads had found. To everyone in Odo, the Kumo shinobi died by injuries from the Kaguya, and had managed to almost make it to the land of hot springs. Orochimaru would learn that despite the appearance of compassion and weakness, Konoha could play the game of cutthroat better than anyone. Konoha, next evening. Naruto and Team 7 made it before dark, checking into the guard station with tired eyes. Naruto turned to his team. Remember, don't talk about the negotiations and cut down any rumors of tensions rising, Naruto said. The genin nodded in understanding as Naruto had talked to them on the run back about the dangers of letting Konoha appear as anything other than business as usual to the outside. And spies could be anywhere. Take the next two days off, Kakashi Senpai will contact you soon, and I'll begin your reward lessons next week. I'll take care of the report so go home. Using a shunshin Naruto took off towards the Hokage Tower. In the dying light the village below the rooftops Naruto ran across looked more beautiful than Naruto had ever seen it, the people below becoming blurs. Reaching the tower Naruto made the sign allowing him to bypass the secretary. Knocking he hears a come in and quietly slips in. The Hokage was in a meeting with Elder Danzo and the commander, all of whom turned to the young Anbu in Chunin Gar. Ah, Naruto. How was your mission? Sarutobi asked, grateful for the distraction. With what they heard from Kakashi's team war was inevitable. There was a spy in the ranks as well, and they had been discussing how to feed the medic nin trader Kabuto misinformation without alerting him. Naruto glanced at the powerful people in the room all of whom could snap him like a twig still, and went into a crouch after setting the scroll on Sarutobi's desk. Mission success, Okage-sama. Raijeko was terrified enough of me to give in to our demands I even managed to convince him to give Konoha a discount with the doubled order without so much as asking. Naruto kept his face carefully blank at the gasp and pleased smile from the Hokage. It seems our weapon is a skilled negotiator, Danzo Shimura mused. Sarutobi shot him a warning glance, but Naruto remained passive, Dragon told him the old warhawk thought Chinchuriki were merely weapons, along with most shinobi. It didn't bother the blonde, it's not like the man actually had any power over him as he was an anbu. I'm proud of your first mission as a squad leader Naruto. Tell me, how did Team 7 perform? Naruto's eye twitch caused Dragon to suppress a face palm and Sarutobi to sigh. The Achiha must have caused trouble was the duo's thought. Sai was excellent, as in my report he was respectful though needs to learn how to interact more as his nicknames caused tension between him and his team. Sakura Haruo Well Hikaru owes me 50 Ryo, as she snapped at Sasuke who was broody and unable to work with the team. Thankfully with bribery for more training the genin were able to put aside their differences. Naruto finished, leaving the rest to the written report. Sarutobi gave him a considering look. Do you consider them ready for the Chunin exams in two months? Sarutobi asked. The plan to draw out their enemies required the Achiha and Hyuga to take part, but losing the last of a bloodline either to treachery or death was not worth it. At Naruto's widening eye Sarutobi had to chuckle. Yes, I value your opinion. You may be young, but you have proven yourself to make wise decisions, especially on this last mission. Well, they don't deserve it to be sure. But, he added, at the somewhat disappointed looks, they will survive with Ro and Gama watching over them. The Achiha and Haruo are not ready for the rank as Sakura is just now getting out of her fangirl phase when she saw how Sasuke treated her and Sasuke would not pass a loyalty test if his life depended on it. Naruto admitted. Danzo coughed. And the third. What about Sai? The undercover handler is almost Jonin level, and I have no troubles with him. Naruto shot back, not liking his games. Everyone knew the pale boy was Danzo so why beat around the bush? The mummy sent a pleased hum, but didn't confirm or deny it. 
and his training. There is some who voice their desire to see Sasuke learn higher level techniques, and the elders wish Kakashi to start on training his Kadari. Saratobi looked pensive at the thought even Kakashi had shot down the notion of upping the Uka's training. Naruto scoffed. Absolutely not Hokage-sama. Sasuke Uchiha still harbors dark thoughts about both his team and brother. He feels superior to everyone around him. If a trader or another village offered him power he'd leave Konoha in a heartbeat giving him instruction in jutsu unique to our village or has a high assassination ability would be foolish. Naruto wished for nothing more than for Sasuke to grow up as a loyal shinobi that's why Naruto gave his word to help the Avenger kill Itachi but until Sasuke stopped his path of darkness, any jutsu or instruction had to be handed out carefully. Thank you Naruto. Kakashi and his team are in the Anu hospital with injuries your captain and Yu Gao is there and will be until next week. Hikaru will run Team 7 for the foreseeable future as he is obviously a good influence on them and Ro will be split for a month except for team exercises. Will I be able to visit my captain? He asked in concern. Saratobi shook his head. Not for a few days. Tenzo is in isolation as his wound was infected with both Kakashi's and the Kagyu's chakra. Kakashi and Yugao you can see tomorrow. Naruto inclined his head the obvious question. Where would he go for the time being? Dragon spoke for the first time. You're to continue training with the Hokage and Toad Sanin, and be on a fill-in basis mouse. Additionally Hayate Jeko requested you for a mission due to your unique hench. You're to meet him in three days. Dragon spoke with hidden amusement, which led to Naruto having a sinking feeling. Dragon being amused about shinobi matters usually led to embarrassment, or pain to all others involved. But, Naruto was a loyal Konoha Anbu, and Anbu don't question their commander. Of course, Dragon-sama. Is that all? You may leave now. Meet me at our training grounds tomorrow at 9 am Naruto. After a final bow Naruto disappeared and headed for his apartment. Naruto knocked tiredly on Hikaru's door and sighed when it became apparent the older teen was gone. Probably at a bar with girls he growled in annoyance. Using the key Hikari gave him Naruto crept inside. Unlike most shinobi, Hikari had no trap set up or seals activated. Tenzo, it'd be the end of him one day but the Hugo would just laugh it off. Still. What he lacked in traps he made up for in mess. While Naruto learned quickly to keep his home neat Hikaru felt the less floor space the better. Angel. You here? Naruto called not wanting to venture inside. Naruto. Your back was the instant reply and his feline friend run on the ceiling to avoid laundry, landing on his head in a happy heap. Whoa, when you learn how to tree walk. He inquired as the pair made their way back inside their own place. Naruto had taken the liberty of picking up Angel's favorite sushi, as apology for dumping her on Hikaru of all people. Thankfully, as the cat gorged all seemed forgiven and forgotten. Dragon taught me. Now I can become twice as big. She said between bites. Naruto sporting his own plate of raw fish and rice was impressed. The Hellcats normally couldn't change size before their third year Angel was barely two. Congrats. Tomorrow, we have training with Hokage-sama. I could teach you water walking, if you'd like he offered. Yes. Soon I'll be able to go on all your missions, the cat cheered. Naruto blinked then winced. So she wasn't over it. Angel, I'm sorry. I couldn't risk your safety. The cat looked up and glared with an intensity enough to shame a Hyuga. And I'm your partner Naruto. I can take whatever you can. She insisted. Tell you what, when you can use the three Genjutsu Dragon Sama left for you in the scroll and water walk, and are able to beat Tora in a spar no gen or ninjutsu, I'll take you along on every mission that doesn't need me alone. Is that fair? The first two were easy. But the last one could take a while just as Naruto intended, with this deal he'd be able to keep Angel inside the village with occasional patrols around for months. 
Toro was technically a house cat but Naruto had been friends with the she-devil since his seventh birthday through fighting and chase games the cat became Kanaha's menace to Jen and not that anyone knew it was Naruto that taught the cat how to hide its tracks or the spots to aim for the most damage or the more recent ability to tree and water walk. It would take months before Angel could hope to beat the older cat without ninjutsu or genjutsu. In the meantime Naruto would prepare her to be deadly and untouchable. Deal. But just you wait, I'll beat that Tora before you know it. Angel declared. Meow came from the living room window. With practiced ease Tora unlocked the window and slid into the apartment, accepting a roll of sushi. Hey Tora. The daimyo's wife too clingy again. Naruto asked as he petted his visitor gently. Meow Tora replied. Angel translated. She says yes, and I want to live here forever. Both residents looked in pity. The daimyo's wife adored her pet to the point of torture and would never part with Tora or else he'd have adopted her years ago. Why don't you stay here tonight, girl? You could show Angel how to water walk tomorrow in the bathtub, he suggested. Tora wrinkled her nose slightly. She liked it better before the black cat came along, and it was just her in his life. Naruto sensed this and added incentive. If you do you can hide here all day tomorrow the seals will prevent others from being able to track you. Meow. She says fine, but that I better not take too long water walking. Why, you fat excuse of a cat. I'll learn it by tomorrow night. Angel vowed and launched an attack at Tora. Naruto ignored the familiar scene and got up. All right you two, don't stay up too late see you in the morning. Luckily Guy had his genin on a week, long training trip in a secluded training ground for survival training Naruto could at last sleep in and visit his friends in the hospital before meeting with the Hokage. That's what Naruto wanted to believe. However, at 4 a water jutsu hit him square in the face. You've had enough sleep time for training. Dragon spoke in a cheerful tone. Oh, and letting Tora hide out in your apartment. I'll allow it but I will blackmail you later, the commander added on at the sight of the two cats asleep on the floor, still tangled up from fighting into the late hours. Meet me at the training grounds in five and left through Naruto's bedroom window. Sadist Naruto grumbled thirty seconds later as he was dressed in his full-on-duty ambi gear and fitted his weights on tight. After filling up the tub and leaving a note for the cats he followed his commander out the bedroom window. Dragon wasn't a cruel or sadistic man really, even if he found immense joy in his youngest operative's cries of frustration as the boy kept attempting his new genjutsu, false surroundings on Dragon. The commander didn't have the heart to tell him it was literally impossible to catch him in any genjutsu, much less a weak one. Even without the success, Naruto was improving rapidly, and he himself could detect and break most C-rank genjutsu. Too bad in the Black Ops mission higher power genjutsu was used. Thankfully the fox wasn't messing with his subordinate's chakra anymore, and as the two grudgingly worked together Naruto's control shot up. By the time Orochimaru made his move the blonde would be able to dispel a ranked genjutsu. Even if Dragon had to beat it into him. Enough mouse. You did almost passable. The waterfall climbing is helping. Go work on the Rasengan while you wait for the Hokage. And the commander was off without a goodbye. Naruto huffed at the common occurrence and plopped down on the grass, rubber ball already in hand, eating a nutrition bar with the other. Twenty clones joined him in intense concentration. Because of the Senbon balancing Naruto, was able to pop the rubber consistently by the time the Hokage showed up an hour later. Impressive now you just have to ask Drea for the third step. Saratobi praised, walking up in his own training gear. Naruto beamed at the compliment. He always looked forward to his time with the third, even after everything. Now, let's see your water manipulation second step. I have a water jutsu for you, but we must get your manipulation up to par even with your reserves for prolonged battles. With fierce determination Naruto began the arduous process with 100 clones to push the waterfall up. Learning a non-primary element took twice as long but Naruto wouldn't fail, his village needed him strong enough to fight a Jinchuriki report said could fully transform. 
you could let me take over and I'd beat that brat Shukaku back to the desert Korama offered. Naruto snorted. Sorry Korama, but I can't let you take over my body, but if you want to help beat your brother I'm up for strategies. No thanks just learn the damn waterfall trick. It can't be that hard, your mother did it in half the time. Kurama taunted. Naruto ignored him and turned back to his task. Soon. I can feel it. After an hour his clones dispelled in groups and another batch took the task back up. For the rest of the day Sarutobi decided to avoid the office work and helped the real Naruto with Teijutsu and battle tactics by beating the crap out of him. When the sun set Sarutobi was still fresh while Naruto had various scorch marks frazzled hair and bruises. That was a good warm up. I'll see you Monday Naruto, remember that until Tenzo recovers you'll be having extra time with me. Oh, and enjoy your mission. Naruto simply panted back at the man from his heap on the ground. That night Angel found him and Naruto gave a groan of congratulations when she demonstrated being able to stand shakily on the water. The two slept in the summer air proud, but dead tired. Two days later, Naruto walked towards the Hokage Tower in the afternoon with a chipper step. He'd just gotten back from visiting Yugao and a restrained Kakashi the man hated hospitals with a passion. His senpai had cried and offered Naruto anything to be let loose, Naruto would have happily complied if the Anbu on guard weren't staring at him. He liked living more than having the copy ninja in his deck. Tenzo was still unconscious during the visit to allow his body to heal, but the Anbu medic assured him that his captain would be awake by the time Naruto returned from his mission. Inside the mission meeting room Hayate was already waiting, his two teammates Genma and Reito leaning against the wall. Well, if it isn't the Mouso, and you're a Chunin now. One step closer to Hokage, a Genma smirked at Naruto's slight blush from the tees at his pre-graduation days. Quiet Genma. Now that we're all here. This is an A-ranked mission. We're going undercover as a noble's daughter and her hired ninja escorts to the land of tea there's a political gathering of the region's noble girls and her father is worried about potential kidnappings due to her young age. Naruto, you'll be henged into the girls seeing as your henge is actually a shapeshift. The rest is in the scroll, but any questions? Hayate asked between coughs. I hate you, Naruto glared at his temporary captain. Hayate smirked while the other two sniggered. The quicker we finish the quicker we'll be home. Sabaki sama he teased. We're ready for you now. Naruto cursed inside as the door opened and a six-year-old girl walked in. This was going to be a long mission, the only upside being that Hikaru wasn't there and Angel was hanging out with Tora and Gama squad on their patrols, while he was gone in exchange for Tora hiding out in his apartment again and Naruto giving Hawk five of the chakra smoke tags. Time to get to work my lady Genma chuckled. A long mission indeed. Chapter 8. 30 minutes out from the nobles gathering. Being forced to hold a henge for over a week that was half his size and do it while in an ornate kimono was not Naruto's idea of fun. Being carried on his teammates Genma's shoulders and eating snacks though? That was the most enjoyable pastime Naruto could partake in. You're getting crumbs in my hair, you blonde bastard. Genma griped. Oh, but I'm a brunette, Naruto pointed out snidely. Shut it. And quit eating your heavy enough already, the Senbon enthusiast whined. Though Naruto's henge could alter his shape, it didn't change his weight. Wonder how he take the information that you're wearing about 25 pounds on your torso. Kurama sniggered in amusement. Naruto sent a mental smirk back. We'll find out when we're safely back in Konoha and I can hide from him for a couple days. Naruto wanted to live thank you very much and didn't doubt Gemma's ability to kill him and blame another village. Not that he would, but one could never be too careful with powerful shinobi. Hey, Hayate, what exactly is this noble's gathering anyways? A pregnant pause ensued at Naruto's question. Ah. A sleepover to build political bonds, Hayate finally managed before coughing again. 
I, I, I have to sleep over with a bunch of spoiled brats. Naruto demanded. Rado tossed a book to the young Ami Chunin with a pink cover how to act during sleepovers for noble ladies. This will help but weren't you taught how to act like a lady for undercover ops? Rado asked. With Naruto's henge he'd be excellent at espionage. Hayate and Rado noticed the suddenly pale look on Naruto's face and Genma felt the shiver. Never mentioned that week again. Uh, you okay? Genma looked up a bit concerned. Naruto shivered again. All I'll say is Kuranayu is far crueler than Ibiki is at times all that tea. He cried. Three sweat drops fell, but they let it go. Soon the group was in front of gold-plated gates, four guards looking stoic at the ninja though, they were disguised as samurai. Genma set Naruto down, getting into character by bowing to the little princess. With nose in the air Naruto closed the book and snack pack, making them disappear somewhere inside his kimono. Tsubaki-sama, I wasn't aware your guards would be samurai. You usually have attendants. And where's your father, dear? An elderly woman with gray hair piled in a tall bun said airily as she daintily made her way outside the gate. Naruto recognized her from the file he'd been given to study over important people. Tsubaki knew this woman was her father's old tutor and friend of the family. Sasam was her name he believed. Bachan. Naruto said giddily in the same manner he imagined the real six-year-old Tsubaki would have. He bowed politely to her before heading inside next to the hunched, but still regal woman. I came all by myself this time, but the samurai are so weird. One eats senbon like a camel, Naruto sent a wink to the now twitching Genma. Hayate had to cough to cover up a snort while Rado inched away from the senbon user looking to practice on something. Oh, how nice dear I didn't know samurai used senbon Sasam commented biting her lip nervously. Naruto noticed this instantly, as did the rest of his team. Hayate gave a look with a clear message be on guard. That evening, Naruto was finally getting the hang of the whole court scene. Over the last several hours she'd greeted dozens of females from high-ranking positions in their rather extravagant nightgowns. Naruto himself wore a loose silk white garment. Underneath the billowy sleeves and loose bottom skirt though were two senbon laced with the new faster-acting sleeping poison Anko had taught him after he helped create the summoning scrolls for the Chunin exams. One prick, and even a trained ninja, would be out within a minute, much less a civilian. Naruto himself only had partial immunity. One thing that confused Naruto were the lack of girls the age of Tsubaki, the age to first attend was six, but the youngest was nine that spoke of the gathering's true purpose to amass allies and degrade enemies, much like the ninja village's Chunin exams really. Most wouldn't send a six-year-old to debut with the likes of the shallow girls Naruto was greeting and kissing up to. No, best to let the older children take care of it, then again, most nobles had several daughters, not one lone six-year-old who had the political weight piled on. Tsubaki-chan. I haven't seen you since you were a toddler. Squeal. We simply must hang out tonight. An older girl glumped Naruto, looking around 15. Wearing a black nightgown that fit to her form, the girl's silver hair and milky blue eyes made her rather exotic looking for the normally mundane looking nobles that relied on makeup and clothes to become so beautiful. At the questioning glance she looked sheepish. Sorry, I should introduce myself, I am Hannah Tashibana. Your father and mine joint own the Tashibana Juno Shipping Company and work together in the trading court. That's where he heard the name. Hannah Tashibana, only daughter and heiress to her father's side of the company that dominated the shipping market. Oh, of course, Hannah-san. My father talks about yours often, Naruto lied, hoping it was true. Hannah's eyes darkened slightly, but was gone before he could notice. With a grin she pulled Naruto away in a very unrefined manner not like the other nobles. Let's go Tsubaki-chan, we can eat the snacks before they come out of the kitchen. But the gathering Naruto tried. It was now he wished his guards were here. Like most of the others Naruto's team had been put into a bunker-like setting to keep assassination attempts or political by play at bay. 
The best they could do was have Hayate send a shadow clone along with some of Naruto's henged into the local servants. Apparently the bodyguards would normally be allowed to be in the hallways, but on coincidence that changed this year the first year the only daughter of Hiroshi Juno, co-owner of the new largest shipping company after Gato fell was old enough to attend this gathering. Is really just politics. Most of those girls would just slow you down if you associate with them. Oh, here we are, Hannah said gleefully as she pushed Naruto into a room with her. The dim light and lack of food was all Naruto needed to know, this wasn't the kitchen and Sabaki shouldn't trust this Hannah person. It got worse when Hannah suddenly became a kunoichi with the same build, but black hair instead of silver. TSK TSK Sabaki-chan. Didn't your father ever tell you to not believe everything you hear? And that old woman said you were bright for your age, with a smirk the girl walked slowly towards what she believed to be a trembling six-year-old. Too bad for the girl that appeared to be a seduction and infiltration specialist, Chunin leveled by her chakra Naruto could now feel once they were alone, he might not be equal to his peers, but he was an Anbu and the girls in her field couldn't hold a candle to the ones in Naruto's. Don't worry, I won't kill you no, I'll just give you a little shot. Your father will sign his half of the company over to my client before long, and you'll be back to being a spoiled princess well as spoiled as a bankrupt girl can be. Why you're a ninja? Naruto squeaked in mock fear, crouching down as if cowed while fishing for information, he'd found out that Sasam was in on it. Now he just needed a village. The Kunoichi stopped and grinned confidently, a complete change from the menacing presence. Yep. Yeah. You're looking at a Chunin kid from Sun Akagur, best village in the world. Now hold still and it won't hurt. She moved in with a shot, intent to jab it into the neck. Naruto took the opportunity and stabbed the Kunoichi in the arm. Ow. You little, but she didn't have a chance to retaliate when he appeared behind her after a Kawarumi with a pillow nearby. With a brutal chop curtsy of his morning training with Guy the girl fell in a heap on the ground. She looked up hatefully as the poison took effect. H how? I didn't sense any chakra. A shape shift, he said simply. After she succumbed his eyes turned hard. With the current tense relations between the villages and war inevitable standing orders from Dragon Sama were for Anbu to kill any possible ninja from other villages that interfered or appeared during the mission, every last body counted in a siege after all. Looking at the girl though, who couldn't be more than 14 or 15 Naruto, let out a wince. Killing her felt wrong on so many levels. She was weak. Overconfident. Not great at split-second combat and a ninja. A heavy heart accompanied him, but orders were orders, the village came first. A smooth motion had his holstered kunai from his thigh, and a clean swipe severed the throat, followed by a stab in the heart. The only solace was she felt no pain. My, how brutal of you, Kit. The village comes first, though, eh? Even before your own petty humanity. Karama taunted half-heartedly. The fox felt his prisoner's pain even now, but the biting words just spilled out. Shut it, Korama. There's a mission to complete. Naruto made a shadow clone that expelled immediately, letting the other clones know what was going on. Hayate would come with a scroll to carry the body in later as Naruto couldn't transform back now to do it. Back in the ballroom type setting no one noticed Naruto had been gone, and he slipped in in time to see the food arrive. Plastering on a pleasant smile for one of the girl's friends Suki from his memory Naruto moved through the night with the grace of a shinobi and blocked the Sunaku Noichi from his mind. That night he slipped out of his assigned room with three other girls, a shadow clone taking his place. Transforming back into himself, he silently crept through the building. Compared to his training and the trouble of pranking in Orange was, this was nothing. In the hallways, the couple of guards he came across were easily avoided or through the hypnotism Genjutsu suddenly needed to go use the restroom giving Naruto a pass. Hayate had found Sasam within her room and was interrogating her when Naruto arrived. Please stop. Her eyes begged, being unable to make a sound with a gag in her mouth. Naruto nodded to his leader before putting a silencing seal up nobody would hear. 
Tell me cough before I get serious. Hayate warned he was used to interrogating in the field, and her roughed up appearance spoke to his skill. The woman in front of them, still dressed in the noble gowns, was a jonin by the looks of it. Hayate had broken her fingers among other things and looked ready to do anything else needed. With a fervent agreement Hayate released the gag. Who else is here? Two more my other Chunin students besides the one you caught, she said quickly, apparently not aware that her student was dead. The other two are disguised as guards on the western wall. Naruto pops a clone he'd summoned earlier, Rado and Genma could take care of them. Contrary to popular belief, masking Chakra wasn't that difficult, it was quite easy in fact for those in the Suna squad's specialty. The trick, though was making it seem like you weren't doing it. Two special jonin, now that they knew what to look for would be able to sense them without much effort. We're allies. This mission is obviously a failure. Let us go and we'll leave. The woman begged. Judging by her chakra levels she only made special jonin probably for seduction skills as she was rather pretty and was employing the helpless card to get out. Statistics showed women who begged were more likely to be released on compassion. After our mission I'm sure, he stopped as Naruto had already slit her throat, and was cleaning the blade on the woman's shirt. Naruto. There wasn't any need to do that, Hayate looked shocked at the 12-year-old's cold actions. Naruto fixed his leader with a blank look as he sealed the kunoichi's body inside another scroll. Hayate Senpai, I'm sure Yugao Senpai and others have told you what Suna is planning. He asked, every Jonin was aware their ally was almost certainly betraying them soon. And what Anbu has been ordered to do. Yes, but this isn't an Anbu mission. But I am still Anbu Senpai. Taking out a squad now, no matter how unused to combat they are, will potentially stop a Konoha Shinobi from dying in the future. The blonde admonished. I killed the other one for the same reason. Your clone didn't say anything I thought it was in battle, Hayate whispered. He looked at his temporary subordinate with a mix of respect and avoidance. Like most special jonin and above Hayate was not above killing but seeing Naruto kill so heartlessly was a bit of a wake-up call most had put the thought of war to the back of their minds, a nightmare none wanted to think about. Naruto had it at the front. His blonde teammate was a better shinobi simply because he did the hard choice to help prevent the what-ifs of war. He killed in cold blood today to save his village tomorrow an Andu agent indeed. Let's go. A clone just dispelled, the two left are combat specialists, and took the encounter beyond the walls. Genma and Rado are holding them off, but fighting in the dark and ninjutsu isn't their specialties. With a nod the two shinobi race to help their comrades. Several shunshin later the duo come across the sparks of kunai and senbon clanging against one another in the crescent moonlight. Genma was more of a strategist than fighter, though his weapon's accuracy was top-notch. However, that didn't help as the dark made hitting the Suna ninja difficult, both had wind affinities to counteract the weapons and the one fighting Genma appeared frighteningly proficient with it. Genma back up Rado. Hayate ordered as Naruto's own wind jutsu blocked their wind from cutting the senbon eating man. Got it. Was his curt reply before disappearing towards the sounds of Rado further off holding off the other Suna ninja. Naruto had trained with the sickly swordsman by his side multiple times, and as such didn't need to speak to know the jutsu the man wanted to use without a sound his sword channeled wind chakra. Konoha scum. Prepare to die, the black-clad ninja perhaps Kunoichi, but Naruto didn't have the time to care bit out while going through hand seals. Kurama can I use your eyes? Naruto asked. When he used Kurama's demon eyes his sight became sharper could see better in the dim lighting at night, and gave off a terrifying appearance. Had, hey, let's see him piss himself and Naruto's normal cerulean blue transformed into cat-like red slits that glowed in the night. When style, Great hurricane and almost vortex barreled towards the Konoha side. It met with Naruto's wind-coated blade and shadow clone barrier cancelling out. Using the distraction Naruto appeared in front of the Suna ninja. Why your L like Gara? The ninja realized as Naruto's blade cut down. 
The ninja dodged. Demon. Was his shout as he jumped from tree to tree in a roundabout fashion. Perhaps Naruto shrugged. Shadow clone jutsu, and three clones charged with swords. Huh, I'm a wind user, stupid demon. An explosion of air erupted from around him and took out the clones. Where'd you go? Coward was the frustrated grunt. Naruto had used the momentary distraction to use the head hunter jutsu to go underground. Right here. Naruto snarled under the influence of the slight QB chakra popping out of the ground below the enemy's feet sword pointed upwards. A Kawarami saved the man, reappearing several meters back. Perfect. Dance of the Crescent Moon. Several Hayate struck the surprised ninja before he could muster a Kawarami or more wind. One Hayate struck a leg, another the back. The third impaled the stomach. The man dropped like a log, bleeding out. H how? He said. Naruto looked down a bit sadly as his eyes with it the bit of feralness that came with them disappeared. You focused on one opponent and don't have enough chakra or experience to jump from one attack to the next to avoid me. Hayate explained while coughing from the high speeds he just produced. You were good enough for Chunin but your cockiness in splitting up while facing Jonin and a Chunin that was your downfall. Spare my teammates. If you tell me something, Naruto prompted. The dying man didn't need to know what happened and Konoha couldn't keep Suna prisoners without breaking the treaty something that had to be done carefully, though it did happen. At the man's flinch of being asked village secrets Naruto chuckled. No, not village secrets. I just want to know if it's true Gara can fully transform, the spies heard rumors, but any confirmation was appreciated. Yes and no one can kill him, not even the Kaiskich. His sand has a mind of its own, the man spoke quickly even as the gut wound no doubt pulsated with pain. Thank you, Naruto said sincerely, and Hayate stabbed him in the heart. You knew all that, Naruto. Hayate said quietly. I know but dying men have less reason to lie. Dragon taught me that. I just made sure I had all the facts straight. With a shrug and sealing of the body the Konoha shinobi went towards their team. Yo, I take it you two finished up? Genma waved with his own scroll of the body. They take them back to Konoha for examination and mind walk if possible. Dead bodies were easier to hide than live ones after all. Several days later, Konoha. You four did well those ninja might have been less battle ready but killing them provided us with potential information. Mouse, excellent on following the standing orders. I know from your report that killing an incapacitated enemy is difficult, but in doing so you gave Konoha another advantage. Dragon complimented. Naruto puffed up a bit in pride while the other three looked a mixture of bored and uneasy, killing defenseless foes that weren't against Konoha was something most normal shinobi didn't need to do in peacetime and it had been years since Hayate did it. Killing every squad that went against you on missions was allowed, but could spark tensions, and in turn another war. But they were preparing for war. And even if not, the blonde next to Hayate smiling was like his girlfriend, the shadow protectors of the village Anbu. Thank you dragon. I am proud of you as well Naruto, how are you feeling about it? The Hokage asked. He was now confident in Naruto being in Anbu, but doing what he did at such a young age could be stressful. I am. Fine, Hokage-sama. I hated doing it, but the village comes first. We protect from the shadows and take the dirtiness in life to protect the village. I would do it again in a heartbeat, Naruto spoke, echoing the words of the commander and other captains. Smiling in pride the Hokage nodded. And that is admirable. You'll be happy to note that Tashibana Noble and his accomplices have been arrested and are being dealt with. Lord Juno thanks you and has promised to hire Konoha exclusively in the future that got smiles everywhere to be assured to be a rich client's first choice meant Konoha would gain more reputation and higher wages. Finished being debriefed Hayate offered to take the group out barbecue after they all had a chance to change. Naruto declined and darted off to find his partner after she wasn't in the apartment. 
I swear I need to learn those tracking seal screw being level 4 this is madness. Naruto mentally screamed two hours later when he still couldn't locate the feline despite numerous stops along the favored hangouts. Finally he spotted Tora being chased by a Gen and Team Team 10 it looked like. When they lost Tora again Naruto swooped down from a building, scooping his other feline friend up. Gotcha Tora. His voice stopped any scratching. He looked at the fat kitty in his arms. Now where is Angel? When Tora suddenly looked everywhere, but at him his blood chilled. Tora, take me to Angel. Or else, I'll never let you in my apartment again, and put a tracking seal on you that links to your owner. That got the cat, and she led the unamused Anu towards the hot springs. What? The? Hell, Naruto balked. Drea, his godfather was spying on the women's side, like normal. What wasn't normal was him sitting on an enlarged angel struggling to hold the scale up and the sage's body weight. Being the size of a lion did that it seemed. What are you doing, Dreyasama? Shh. Quiet Gaki angel, a bit larger please. Good. Naruto looked deadpan. Why is my cat your seat? Training. Now shush. Angel looked up with a save me expression. Grinning deviously he cupped his mouth. Pervert. There's a pervert. He screamed. Tenku Noichi screamed and jumped over the wall with towels on. Angel instantly went back to normal and jumped into his arms. While Drea met with a fitting fate the duo discreetly used a shunshin. Yaki, you'll pay for that. All my lost research, I should kill you. Drea cried as he sat down to a now ramen gorging Naruto and fish eating angel. I aim just kept giving the cat more with stars in her eyes. Please you pervert. Besides, if you killed me you couldn't see me do. This and satisfaction filled Naruto's eyes as a perfect Rasengan came to life. Drea looked gobsmacked. Recovering quickly the man smirked heavily. Ah, my precious student. As you've now mastered that technique, it is my duty to assess you and your partner's skills through an all-out spar. Drea grabbed the now trembling Naruto and Angel and took them away to the training grounds with a wave to the ramen stand. Why me? Was heard throughout the village. Konoha Hospital. Kabuto, Yakushi couldn't keep the smile off his face as he left his boss's office. As head of both the Anbu and regular hospital the lead medic had updated files on all the active ninja in addition to keeping his notes from every council meeting. Konoha had been lax for years and even now it wasn't uncommon for bits of information to slip through. So they think missing ninja are banding together or are actually working for Kiri or Iwahet. My how convenient, best not tip them off to Orochimarusama's pact with Suna then. In the young spy's apartment, a certain bandaged man was waiting a man Kabuto personally hated with a passion after the attempted assassination. Danzo, he said neutrally. Danzo looked up. To what do I owe this pleasure? Kabuto, just dropping by. A certain snake and I could share a common goal and information if you'd like some help that is. I'm listening. Kabuto said hesitantly. Chapter 9 Next day. You call this an advanced storage scroll? Drea mocked his student. Level 3 in sealing was such a milestone, because it consisted of not only learning the basics of silencing seals and prisoner scrolls, but expanding on everything levels 1 and 2 taught. That meant that once mastered one could make storage scrolls any size not just the fixed amount from level 1 and exploding tags with larger blast radiuses after level 3. The next milestone was 6. But at the rate Naruto was going according to Drea, at least he'd never get there. Drea-sama, it looks fine, Naruto tried to say calmly. This was the fifth try that appeared perfect, but Drea tossed in the fail pile. You're an Izumaki take pride in IT. Drea yelled back. In truth Naruto's seals were above average and would pass in the shinobi stores, but Drea wanted perfect so he'd continue to berate his student. Look, just try again and faster. No seal master should need more than 15 seconds for matrixes this simplistic. Yes, Drea-sama. Call me Sensei Gaki. I'm your sensei. 
You lost that right after yesterday's spar Naruto growled as he ran through another attempt. His leg was still fusing itself back together from Drea tossing him into a cliff. You're healed. Almost. And no pain no gain. Whatever. You just wanted a punching bag. Psst. Even so make another one. That try took 22 seconds. As the two continue to banter and throw several more enlarged storage scrolls in a pile, they never notice Dragon pocketing them. After all, Enu Budget could always use more storage scrolls, and he'd teach his young subordinate torture resistance or something as payment. By the end of the day Naruto could finally make any size scroll within the time limit, over a hundred had been discarded. Of course when the pair looked over they found the pile empty, much to their confusion. A happy dragon meanwhile was already back in his office with the hall. Two days later at dawn Naruto and Angel were with Drea in the forest of death. Nothing but Naruto's sword and several spare explosive tags with them. Drea had snuck into the apartment and dragged him out to the Jinchuyuriki's least favorite place in the village. Drea-sama, what the hell? My squad comes here often enough already, I hate it here. And that's a problem, Gaki. You're scared of this place. Damn right I am. Naruto cut in without remorse. Angel nodded along, having spent a fair amount of time in the place as well. I won't have my students scared of some measly forest. Your captain will be ready to resume your Jinchuriki training in two days until then you will stay here with Angel. To make it more interesting if you succeed I'll let you sign the toad contract. All opposition died in both cat and boy's throats at the promise to sign such a contract was worth more than almost anything. Prepare to have that contract ready for us, we'll survive for two days. Naruto declared. Yeah. There's no way we'd be killed here creepy man. Angel chorused. Eh. But there's not just surviving. You two have to defeat the northeast hive of wasp spiders don't die, okay? And the sage was gone with a cackle. We're going to die, aren't we? Naruto asked as the pair set off. The northeast hive was the largest of the five groups of wasp spiders, and made them up, but that would be horrible if they were real imagined human-sized flying spiders with wasp stingers. Shivers, said to be the size of a grown man, with a wasp-like lower body and spider fangs on the front. True monsters, Naruto, only fought a couple at a time in the past while Anko and him gathered their venom for her more lethal poisons. They weren't particularly deadly alone, but in a mass hive. Probably. On the bright side, if we do stay alive we'll have the venom of over two dozen wasp spiders enough to make Anko pay our next Ichiraku feast I'll bet. Angel snorted. Think bigger Naruto. I bet she'll finally teach us that really powerful neurotoxin I could coat my claws in it and watch my enemies twitch to death. The hell cat gave a demonic laugh. Naruto sweat dropped. You know you scare me sometimes. Up in the trees a clone of Drea used his transparent escape technique the advanced version of the chameleon jutsu taught to Anbu to observe. He obviously wouldn't let the two actually die, just experience near death in a controlled environment. It would be good practice for the wars to come. Reports showed a possible queen in this hive a nice warm-up for fighting another Jinchuriki. Good luck, my godson. Another pair of eyes followed the young Anbu on his task, and they weren't human. Entrance to the wasp spider cave. Both gulped as the putrid scent permeated from the entrance. Looking at one another the two nod resolutely. Stepping inside Naruto makes four clones to scout ahead and the real one sends Chakra to his ears, Angel already preparing her claws. However, the clones keep getting taken out by lone bugs. We'll have to go confront them ourselves seeing as clones won't work to draw them out, and I only have a few explosive tags. Naruto informed as the third group of four met Doom. Not for the first time Naruto contemplated the merits of murdering Drea for his stupidity. Angel bristled. Don't you Fuinjutsu guys just use blood to write seals? The cat hissed slightly, mostly brought in by fear of the cave. Naruto felt anger and shame fire up. Creating seals from blood is level 5. I can't just whip up a bomb from blood yet. 
HMMF, some seal master you are. The cat gave her human friend a smirk. Let's just go. Stupid cats and their expectations. Half a mile through the caves and six dead ends later they find it, the main hive. Screech 30 wasp spiders scream at once. Shit. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto says and ten clones pop forth as a shield. Retreat. He commanded as the enclosed space spelled certain death. As the pair ran with bursts of chakra Naruto attached his tags to the kunai. Reaching the outside once more Naruto threw the kunai in the air. Release. And they all exploded at once creating a cloud of smoke to prevent the buggers from flying too high. What started was a fight for survival and this time it wasn't a spar and no team was there to back them up. Dodging a pincer strike Naruto shunshins to avoid a shot of poison. Angel had grown to a panther-sized, already having three of the hive underneath her form. Twelve of the creatures dive-bomb him, taking out the clones he'd made. Wind-style, drilling air bullets. Naruto said and six bursts of wind fly outwards, decimating the horde. Take that, you bastards. Idiot. We need them intact somewhat to extract the venom. Angel shouted from nearby. Oh yeah, oops. Kenjutsu it is then. Inside the forest the trees were massive, but interconnected, making a shunshin battle with unintelligent bugs not that difficult. The real danger came in their poison one sting, or thrown glop, and you were paralyzed for days, meaning you died. Even Naruto wasn't immune. Blade met Stinger from one of the larger ones in the trees. Summoning Wind Chakra the stinger got cut in half Naruto being careful not to damage the venom sac stored near the upper thorax. Screech was the warning and Akawarumi with a clone saved him from a three wasp dive bomb. Now, Angel Attack moved twin death cats. Using Naruto's ability to transform two hell cats leapt high into the air and pounced on the trio of wasp, tearing through them with claws. Eventually the move would include Jutsu. But for now the claws were enough. Use my power. I don't need it though there's less than five left. Just take it. Kurama sounded frantic. Worried Naruto drew on have a tail's worth. Kaboom. The forest floor exploded with chunks of rock hurtling through the air. A stray one taking out Drea's startled shadow clone. Crap. Angel, said Cat was flung against a tree. Rising from the dust was a wasp spider half the size of the legendary game Abunta. Covering the entire body was a hard shell that not even the tons of earth could impale. That's not good, Naruto muttered as he caught his unconscious partner Gash's apparent, and a broken hind leg guaranteed. A shadow clone appears next to him. Take her to Hana quickly, he ordered. As the clone took off he turned to his opponent, obviously the queen. The wasp spider spurts a volley of the toxin at him. Weaving in and out of the globs of familiar orb forms. Rasengan. He shouts, unable to stay quiet in his rage as red chakra bubbles around his form and eye slit. It hits a steel hard fang breaking it off before Naruto is blown off. Using the momentum he bounces back off the tree and barrels through a wing a known weak spot cutting it in half. Pivoting. He bears his claws at the armored back of the queen trying to take off. Yokai enhanced claws meet the shell, tearing into it with feral rage though it doesn't penetrate. Another Rasengan grinds into it to create a hole that claws immediately impale the opening. An inhuman scream fills the forest and echoes into the village. Dragon had already activated an Andu squad the moment he felt the QB chakra burst forward suddenly he knew Drea's idea was foolish when he heard of it not an hour before and they would have words later and quickened his own pace at the roar. Had take this. Naruto snarled and did a downward slice with jagged wind chakra flowing cut the beast deep on the thorax. Unfortunately the sword struck the sack and a river of the toxin doused Naruto. Falling off the dying beast's body, unable to move Naruto passed out as Kurama's chakra went away hurtling headfirst towards the ground. His sword clambered off to the side. Naruto. Kurama yelled as his chakra faded. When Anbu arrived minutes later though, they didn't find their comrade in a bloody smear on the floor. He wasn't anywhere. 
No scent led away or chakra signature to light a path. Andu Agent Mouse had just vanished. Search the forest now. Dragon commanded, he himself aiding. Drea poofed next to him. Damn, Yaki did great to take out a queen by himself. Knew he could do it. He was stopped when he looked at Dragon's eye holes boring into him as if he was an insignificant bug. Leave this forest before I kill you, and I assure you I could as every Anmu would back me up on this. I will deal with your incompetence later. And the Anmu commander was gone, leaving a gulping toad sage behind. Next morning. Naruto groaned, his whole body numb. He couldn't even open his eyes. What happened? You took enough of that creature's venom to kill boss summons. I don't even know how we're alive as it cut me off from you. It doesn't smell like a hospital. I can't sense any human chakra signatures. No negative intent is directed towards you either. Kurama added. Naruto did a mental take back, unaware that Kurama could do such a thing. I'm surprised you're awake so soon, young one. A male voice filled with age spoke somewhere to the side of him. He couldn't move but found his voice worked. Where am I? He asked the darkness. The voice chuckled good-naturedly. In the tiger and panther territory our healers sucked the poison out before it could absorb into your body. Your tenant took care of the rest. Naruto stiffened at the last part. Calm yourself, I mean you no harm. You said tiger and panther. What does that mean? Child, you're in the summoning realm my granddaughter brought you here, impressed with your battle while on her routine patrol of the area. Defeating a queen, even one hindered by the environment and still in her infant stages, is quite a feat as for what it means. Well, the council is deciding that now. Hibiki-sama, the council made a decision, the boy is deemed worthy. A younger voice cut off Naruto's question. Ah, excellent. What do you... You'll find out when you next awaken. For now, sleep, and an overwhelming tiredness took him. Sleep Jutsu. Naruto realized, not strong enough to stay awake. Now that he's asleep. What about the toads? Hibiki looked at the young panther in front of him. Hibiki known for his genjutsu that focused on confusing his opponents back in his youth and still shudder at that word lol was a rather stern elder. The young feline shifted. The council decided we would fight to the last cat on both clans for the boy. He's been marked as our summoner. Hibiki nodded in approval. Good. Anyone who tries anything can answer to me. The younger cat shuddered slightly. Nobody wanted to mess with Hibiki the Echo Death. Even Manda was wary of the unusually small, but deadly panther. Twelve hours later. When Naruto awoke again he felt almost normal. Nice to see you're awake again. Hibiki said. Naruto looked over. A panther speckled with gray though the size suggested a teenager, stared back. Naruto recognized the voice again. Hibiki. Yes, it is I. And I'm the one who saved you blondie. A rather female voice joined in. Another panther the same size piped up sitting next to a rather large white tiger. Oh ma'am. Thank you. Naruto tried. He was still trying to process the situation. As he sat up he realized his shirt and mask were missing. Hibiki noticed. Your torso was soaked through with the queen's toxin they're currently burning in a bonfire. Now, I believe it's time to get down to business. Business? Yes, child you've become our next summoner. The tiger lifted a banner saying congrats. At Hibiki's praise. Welcome to the clan, I'm Akira and this is Hisoka. He doesn't talk much. Or really at all now that I think about it, the newly named Akira greeted. Hisoka bowed his head, eyes lazy like a certain cyclops. Oh. Well, I was going to sign the toad contract. Too late. We already claimed you just sign your name in blood Akira said much too cheerfully for Naruto's taste. She reminded him of his Hyuga teammate, and that wasn't a compliment, one Hikaru was enough. B, but I should get a say in this. He cried indigently. A tick appeared on Akira's head. 
I saved you from an uncool death by falling. You will sign this and me and Hisoko will be your familiars. Or else. The voice was sweet, but Naruto understood the underlying tone, all females mastered at an early age, surrender or die. Hisoka sat silently and attempted an intimidating gaze, but failed miserably. I I'd love to be the tiger and panther clan summoner. Had. Whipped by every female pathetic. Shut it. Good. Before you go back to your village, you need to understand the joint clan's history. Why do I feel like this will be worse than Tenzo's lectures? Naruto muttered. Later, Hokage Tower. The Panthers reversed summoned him in front of the tower hours later in a cloak, Hisoka, and Akira next to him. They'd already checked on Angel who'd be released tomorrow morning. Well Naruto, make sure to summon us often. I expect you to let me play at the next poker night you told us about. Akira said. Right. I thought summoners were the boss. Silly. Where did that stupid notion come from? Even Hisoka sweat dropped at that. Naruto shook his head and waved goodbye. With a gulp he stepped into the tower going missing for two days wasn't exactly protocol for both a Jinchuriki and Anbu. There was probably a small panic, he mused. Turned out there was a massive panic in the council room. On his way to the Hokage's office Yugao dropped down in Anbu gear and gave him a crushing hug. Thank God you're okay where were you? Your chakra couldn't be sensed, and your scent disappeared. Naruto gasped. Senpai. Need. Oxygen. She let him go and he sighed. Sorry, but I kind of got saved by a summoning clan and. Save it mouse. You're needed in the council chambers, Dragon's voice came from nowhere. Nodding the pair followed the commander. Dragon wouldn't admit it, but he was relieved. If Naruto hadn't shown up when he did Dragon would have killed the Toad Sage where he sat in the chambers. Most of the clan heads and the elders felt the same way. Dragon couldn't remember a time where the Hokage had to hold himself back so much to keep from killing somebody. As the trio entered re-entered in Dragon's case the Shinobi Council Chambers everyone visibly relaxed even if Naruto still looked pale and was in a tattered cloak. Drea gave a sheepish grin and wave. Hey Gaki, glad you survived. Nice outfit by the way, very rugged. It came from my summons my shirt and mask were doused in the toxins and I almost died. Three times according to Hibiki-sama. Naruto added the last part and Drea winced. Yeah, sorry. I guess you weren't ready to fight a queen yet, though no harm done, you're alive. He chuckled. Wait summons. You're only allowed to sign the toads. I signed the joint tiger and panther contract, and there's nothing to be done. They saved me and they're well versed in genjutsu, medical jutsu and combat, all things I could use. Drea huffed. I've never heard of them. I'll bet they're second rate. Your father would want you to sign his contract, annul your contract now. He ordered. Naruto grew a tick mark, but it was the Hokage who snapped. Drea need I remind you that you're on thin ice. Putting a Jinchuyuriki in unneeded harm without supervision so close to the village. I had a shadow clone watching. That popped before it had a chance to help. Now, you left him and his feline companion who isn't ready to fight Jenin yet. Much less a queen wasp spider alone without all his equipment or backup. There were plans to deploy two Chunin squads to clear the hive out safely before the exams and Naruto could have joined in there for experience. But you decided that setting him loose there was an acceptable course of action without informing anyone until after he entered the cave. Drea that folly could be called treason by some. And then demanding him to break a sacred bond with a new clan that could benefit Konoha simply for pride. The clan heads glared daggers at the Sanin. Konoha had a round 10 contract and adding an 11th one that was so well balanced would be a boon, especially when Naruto one day took on a student or had a family and passed it to them. Drea had the intelligence to look apologetic. If the Jinchuyuriki had died we'd have a biju to fight on our doorstep within 5 years Danzo added. Sorry, it's just his father. Is dead. 
My father is dead, Dreyasama, and while I enjoy learning from you the same things he did, I am not a carbon copy that you seem to want despite your claims. The toad contracts should go to another worthy Konoha ninja, I can think of several in Anbu already, or you could chose one of the soon-to-be academy graduates. I didn't question you on dropping me in the forest, but from what I just heard I should have. Naruto was disappointed in the man supposed to be his godfather, why had his parents thought the guy would make an acceptable replacement family? Almost killing him for training by having him take an A- minus rank level unofficial mission? Talk about irresponsible. Well said, Naruto. Why don't you tell us exactly what happened in the forest and beyond? Sartobi interlaced his fingers as he said it, hiding the pleased smile. Naruto had willingly told his old student to pick another Konoha ninja that spoke of his character as some would try to gain a second contract, or just leave the matter to fester. Huh? well it all started when Angel and I were dragged out of bed and given 10 seconds to grab our gear though Drea only let me take my sword, some kunai and a few explosive notes. Speaking of which it was recovered and repaired, that last cut cracked the metal hard as it is to believe. Sarutobi interjected. Naruto beamed then continued, the council becoming more impressed by the minute. So let me get this straight, the Tiger and Panther clan which merged less than 25 years ago after centuries of bloody conflict that almost wiped them out but now work side by side in flawless teamwork saved you from certain death and decided you would be the first summoner since they became one clan. And this was after you beat a queen through luck and circumstance, and before that wiped out just about the entire hive of the northeast sector. Sarutobi stated dryly an hour later. Naruto hadn't dived into the intricate history or abilities of his summons, but that was allowed to protect the summons and summoner from enemies that might uncover the intel. Besides, he already planned to fill in Dragon for the Anbu-only archives all of those files were harder to steal than the Hokage Mountain it seemed. Yes, Hokage-sama. My summons look forward to allying with Konoha, while my familiars insist on joining in the next poker game. Some chuckles echoed at that, but many nodded the okay. And Korama says I'm practically immune to the wasp spiders now, not that I want to test it. Some of the minor clans looked a bit scared at Naruto being on first name basis with the beast, but Sarutobi didn't bat an eye. Of course. Take tomorrow off. In two days Tenzo will restart your mastering of your Jinchuriki powers. In the meantime read this scroll before our next meeting and a thick scroll appeared out of nowhere and bonked the blonde on the head. Not reacting as his commander was next to him and might take offense to him cursing their boss, he bowed before shun shining away. Sarutobi then dismissed everyone else but the elders, Dragon and Drea. Am I still his teacher? Drea asked with some hope. Kohari slid her eyes over to him, and Danzo wished the man had let someone sign the toad contract he could kill him then. Yes, but. Sarutobi stopped the grin on Drea's face. We'll discuss additional punishment, but for now you are to have your sessions with Naruto monitored by either Dragon Tenzo myself, or anyone I deem trustworthy. You have no say in what you teach him besides Fuenjutsu though I trust he'll be at least a solid level 4 by the Chunin exams even his mother's Fujutsu that you know. Drea looked indignant. I was going to start him on the hair Jutsu this week, he started. No, I won't allow that until this mess with Suna and Odo is taken care of. Until then continue to work on his Rasengan. I know you can create it quicker so he can to the 5 element seal and your transparent escape technique. The Taijutsu training you put him through is useful, but focus on Fuenjutsu, Chakra Control, and Ninjutsu for now. Sarutobi put his no-nonsense voice on that Drea hated since his genin days causing the S-rank Sanin to meekly agree like he was 6 again, and just got schooled for his attitude. Yes, Sensei. Hiruzen, is it really wise to show Naruto the 5 element seal? He is a Jinchuriki after all, and the seal is useful to subdue him. Kohari pointed out. Ah, but he won't be learning the unsealing method yet. Once he masters the entirety of the fox's chakra I'll allow him to know the unsealed jutsu. Mollified, the elders gave curt nods. Now Drea, you have a year to pick out a new toad summoner. Sarutobi warned. 
But Sensei, Naruto is the child of prophecy, I can feel it. That doesn't mean he needs your summoning contract. I am well aware you view him as an apprentice. If only you'd make it official, Dorea griped. The Hokage refused to sign off on the paperwork for some reason. Sarutobi chuckled a bit. It's not me you have to convince, but his captain and commander they have say over Naruto, as he's an Anbu operative and having an apprenticeship could take away from his duties after the exams. You're the Hokage. You could sign off. But I won't. Drea, I have let you all of my students become whiny brats that get slaps on the wrist for major infractions. If you were anyone else tonight you would be at the very least in Ibiki's company. Be grateful that isn't the case. Drea Sama, you will never be Mouse's mentor if you insist on acting like you are with a genin. I spy on your sessions, and you waste precious time joking around and peeping. It's research, and I am bonding with my godson. Drea shot back to the man. Dragon looked at him, and even the mask seemed to send a cool expression. You're an instructor first, if you can't maximize your time with him, I will have you write the jutsu on scrolls, and let him learn them himself. There are plenty of guard rotations he could fill up. My men are valuable, and wasting his time when the village needs everybody is foolhardy. Sarutobi and the elders nodded, Danzo especially agreeing with the Anbu commander. While they still had a too soft handle on the Jinchuriki, the boy was at least progressing reasonably fast. Danzo found himself wondering what could have happened if the boy had always been properly trained. So much time wasted for childhood. At least he was a solider now. Fine. I will find another summoner the toads will accept. Even if he really just wanted to have his toad eat dragon. Next day, in Uzuka Clinic. Gazing fondly at his partner Naruto bowed again to Hannah. Thank you so much Hannah-san. I know cats are not your favorite. This was the third time he thanked her, but still felt it wasn't enough. Angel had a punctured lung that could have killed her had Hannah not been a competent vet. It's fine. I told you, it was my pleasure. It's the least I could do after how you helped me that night. Though I didn't expect you of all people to be mouse. Just remember pup that your feline can't train for a week and bed rest for two days. Be safe, Angel. Don't go fighting wasp spiders anytime soon. Angel didn't answer as the drugs to dull the pain were keeping her under. She wouldn't be answering for at least a day. Well, thanks anyway. And please don't spread it around. The council just found out themselves a while ago, I'd rather less figure it out. Of course. Your Anbu identity won't be compromised by me, though if Angel is going to go on missions you'll have to think of something. Naruto winked. Already on it once my Fuinjutsu skills are adequate. The masked boy cradled the cage with the snoozing Hellcat as he strolled back into the village. He'd take the rooftops or Shunshin, but the jostling could harm her. Putting on a henge while passing an alley, the now black-haired brown-eyed Naruto blended into the crowd. With the slightly dark thought about how a simple henge made him human to the civilians he clenched his fists and made his way back home. After Angel was set up on the couch with a sunbeam Naruto made two shadow clones and began to comb through the water jutsu scroll the Hokage hit him with. Hug moving whirlpools a eh? creates four defensive whirlpools that can absorb attacks and acts as a barrier. Defensive A minus rank. What? I can't even do C ranks without wasting too much chakra until that damn waterfall is controlled. It's an Izumaki Jutsu. Your mother used it it's mainly for Fuinjutsu users to be given respite while crafting seals, but she managed to make it offensive. Naruto's furry friend yawned at its container. Wow, Kurama. Though you might want to hold off on that one. Instead, read the next one. Kurama offered lazily. Water Wild Wave. See rank? Water comes out in a burst from the user's mouth. And it doesn't need a set amount of chakra. The user controls the size. That could work. I'm a wise fox of course it will work. As the real one continued on reading all about his chosen next jutsu to learn his other selves were busy. 
One clone sat with sealing supplies Dragon had dropped off with a note of make as many of the expanded exploding tags as you can with these by tomorrow. So far, the number was in the 50s with no sign of running out. The other clone sat opposite counting the money they had saved up. Like most shinobi Naruto didn't trust banks. He could easily rob one so he had no reason to trust one with his money. Instead he kept them in storage scrolls one in his locker at HQ for missions, one in his apartment locked under floorboards and traps with the bulk of his money at his captain's place for safekeeping. His gama-chan was just pocket change, hardly a dent in his savings from all the missions lately. After he checked on Tenzo and they went over how his battle with all the wasp spiders when Naruto had requested it back for the afternoon. Now said clone was counting carefully adding the double A minus rank pay for his extermination of the hive and payment for letting Anko harvest the poison herself and whistled at the result. Boss, we have enough to last six months without missions and still go restock our stuff. The real Naruto breathed a sigh of relief at that, he had enough then to pay for more fuinjutsu paper and ink, and still have leftovers for new clothes. An improved diet finally resulted in a growth spurt, even if it was a measly inch. His uniform still fit for the most part, and those were free issue though. Knock, knock went the door. Setting the book down he leapt over the growing stack of tags and answered the door, surprised when Drea and Dragon are there. Drea-sama, Dragon-sama. He greeted with annoyance, wasn't this supposed to be his day off? Mouse slash Gaki they answered simultaneously. Dragon seemed to send daggers at his fellow visitor before taking over. Drea-sama is going to give you Fuinjutsu lesson as he has free time. I am here to supervise and collect the tags I ordered. Naruto looked from his commander to his tutor bad role model slash sword of godfather and realization dawned. You got caught peeping again, didn't you? He deadpanned. Drea looked affronted. It's research. Spell it with me or E-S-E-A-R-C-H, research research research. Okage-sama thought since he had so much free time he'd have no trouble continuing your lessons. That, and I threatened to send Guy on him otherwise. An involuntary shudder went up Naruto's spine. As Drea pushed past and went into the apartment Naruto's expression became curious. Guy is on a mission though. I know, but it's too much fun to tell him that Dragon signed back and amusement was obvious. Suppressing a snort Naruto turned towards his tutor. What are we learning today? His excitement for more Fuinjutsu surpassed his need to tease Drea for his cowardice no matter how well founded. Oh, just how to make those prisoner scrolls you keep hammering for, stars formed in Naruto's eyes. Finally, Team Rose hard earned budget wouldn't suffer. Prisoner scrolls the preferred way to transport enemies for incarceration and interrogation across large distances was a combination of a stasis seal, an advanced storage seal that would freeze the body's functions for up to a week by running on the user's chakra though it used such a small amount that even enemies on their last legs could be sealed and comrades could be put into it too though the cost prevented that. For every scroll cost a small fortune, and could only be used once or twice depending on the length of stay before it had to be tossed. Yada. He cheered. Drea looked fondly then puzzled. Wait, why are you so interested in this particular seal when it's cumbersome and time-consuming to make? Prisoner scrolls took over 10 minutes to write even for masters and 30 for those of Naruto's skill level technically a level 3, many just went over the theory of it and didn't bother to create them before level 5. Ever since Odo has bared its fangs Anbu's already meager budget for individual teams has been reduced to fund the preparations for the exams. For the price of one prisoner scroll, which may I remind you the Black Ops uses a lot I can make 10 out of Fuinjutsi supplies. Lives could be saved as transporting both injured squad members and clients through enemy territory is dangerous and sometimes the squad member has to use our suicide technique as most squads carry one at any time. With me, I can have my clones make enough for each team to have at least three at any time. Drea looked impressed and proud. You'll make a killing off of it, I'll bet. He joked though. Naruto shook his head though. No, 
Hokage sama will designate enough for my cost of supplies, and I'll be given a C rank pay for every 30 I make won't be hard with clones. It'll give me experience and help out the core until the budget is back to some normalcy. Using this method could save several agents as they wouldn't have to decide before missions whether more kunai medical supplies are expensive, but life-saving seals should be bought. Contrary to civilian thought, each permanent squad be it a genin team to the top andu team was allotted certain funds from the village each month for supplies. This would theoretically cover the cost of mission-specific supplies and most of the basic gear in theory. However, since the QB attack the civilian council has gotten more influence over taxes and pricing, making the allotted budget become less and less all-inclusive. More and more ninja were having to dip into their mission pay just to get the needed supplies to survive the various missions outside the village thus dragons plan to use Naruto's ungodly amount of clones to outfit the core in the needed seals, even if it was only until after all this mess with allies turning traitor with Orochimaru blew over. Not to mention all the one-on-one -on -one training you'll get from me as payment, Dragon pointed out, much to Naruto's horror. The commander chuckled at the ghost white of his subordinate slash punching bag slash student. Well that's noble gaki. Now the first thing one must know about prisoner scrolls are the combination ratios of the ink, chakra and space between each character. Drea began. Naruto took note studiously. As the pair drawled on Dragon found himself relegated to the couch with Angel, though the feline was no help and snoozed. Man if only Hikaru wasn't playing Sensei with Kakashi's brats today I could be catching up on the Ika Ika or sparing with the Hokage. Side, the things I do for the village. Course, Dragon would stay until the Toad taught Naruto the scroll he couldn't have him attempt to run off after giving a basic explanation after all. Though if Fuinjutsu wasn't so boring to normal people Dragon might not find it tempting to pull his hair out while perusing through a budget report. Gaki. Not so much chakra do you want to blow up your table. With Team 7. Hikaru was ready to slit his team's throats. Or rather, just Sasuke's. I should be learning jutsu, not stamina exercises. The Achiha fumed. Hikara rolled his eyes, while Sakura practiced healing bruises on Sai from training. Both ignored their teammate, whose attitude had soured worse since Hikari took over again. Kakashi was due back any day however, and then the Anbu agent would be free for a while. If only the Cyclops would hurry. No, you are not ready loyalty, and stability wise for more jutsu and basics kill. Your rival Naruto uses primarily the Shunshin, weapons, and a couple of other jutsu to fight that and his Rasengan. But the brat doesn't need to know that. Continue the basic supply teamwork, and you'll beat the strongest of opponents, Sasuke glowered at him, but resumed the obstacle course they had set up. If he would just prove he wouldn't defect at the first signs of power I and many others would love to teach him scores of jutsu. However, until that day he isn't even allowed to have access to genjutsu or ninjutsu over C rank. Not even his family library gives him them as it's controlled by the Hokage. Let's take a break. Hikaru offered as Sasuke failed the fourth time to finish the course as his anger took over. Just two more days or so. Chapter 10. Jinchuriki Training Area Two Days Later. Naruto lay on the earth, with binds covering him while he panted. Skin was slowly regrowing as even the 15 seconds in the four tails equated to his outer skin burning off. Four tails is obviously too much for now. We'll go slow then and build up from the bottom, until we figure out why four tails had that violent of a reaction. Tenzo said from his sitting position. Drea was off to the side. Naruto nodded in agreement. But the sage frowned. He could control that much with practice. Drea claimed. It was his idea to make Naruto ask Kurama for more chakra than the one and a half tails he could use at any time without problems. The result. A mini QB Naruto letting off a primal roar and almost ripping Tenzo's throat out. Why can't I control four tails? He asked Kurama. The fox grunted. You haven't passed the next stage. Until then three tails will be your max. What's the next stage? I won't tell you at this point. Kurama growled. Naruto scowled. 
Why not? You're not ready, and you're most definitely not worthy. What do I have to do then? I'm not sure. Now leave me alone, human. Naruto winced at that slightly when Korama went to human he was on his breaking point, only flesh bag or damn human were worse. Deciding to let the fox cool from whatever had him in a bad mood Naruto turned towards his bickering teachers. And I say that if I loosen the seal he'd be able to use more tails without the backlash. No, to do so would be foolish, Naruto is my responsibility, and the Hokage wouldn't approve of messing with the seal. Tenzo barked back. He should force the power, and will it to him not succumb to its rage. It's not the seal that's at fault, but his resolve I'd say. What would you know? Kushina Sama only accessed a tail's worth of chakra in the most dire of circumstances and Konoha has never trained another Jinchuriki. Our spies are digging on any information of how Kumo does it, but until then we proceed with caution. Listen, boy. I'm a seal master so it would be fine. And I'm his captain who says no. Well, I'm his godfather. Hardly his family is his squad, not a man who abandoned him. Silence rang out from that last statement. Drea looked as if he was struck while Tenzo fumed at the man's audacity to suggest tampering with the most complex seal in existence. Naruto takes the silence as his chance to speak. Kurama says I have to pass the next stage whatever that means. And, what is this next stage? Tenzo prompted. He won't say I'm not worthy yet, or something. Sai, three tails and control is still impressive you're almost as fast as Guy with his weights on using three tails. Four was blinding though I couldn't gauge it. Take the rest of the day to rest tomorrow, we'll start refining your control of the tails. Naruto nodded then turned to his sort of teacher in pity, the man was trying he knew it, it's just he kept failing spectacularly. Hey, Drea Sama want to get something to eat? He asked. Drea looked up hopefully then grinned. Of course, Gaki. Fish, my treat. He slings the blonde over his right shoulder. Naruto groaned as his torn muscles and patched skin howl. First though, let's pick up Angel from the apartment. Naruto said. HMPH, okay, but I'm only paying for you two. In the end Naruto's familiars join in as well. Hisoka sat lazily, inhaling mass quantities of salmon, while Akira chatted with a still bandaged angel. I'm telling you, by the time we're through you'll be the strongest hell cat alive. Akira assured the young feline. Angel looked down at her casted leg. I was so weak, I couldn't do more than take out a few bugs, while Naruto was left to take care of the queen by himself. Ever since she had woken up and discovered her partner had been left alone, the cat couldn't stand herself and her weakness. I agree you are weak. Angel sputtered at this, and everyone else but Hisoka had dropped jaws. But that's why I'm here. You're looking at the number one assassin panther in my generation? With me by your side you'll be kicking ass and taking names. Trust me. Hisoka rolled his eyes at this, but continued to eat. The kitten would learn. Or die trying. Hey though, why are you with Naruto now? I mean hell cats don't normally venture into the human world until they're five or six years old or older, you're only two. Naruto perked his ears at this. He tried fishing information from Angel about her past, but aside from an occasional comparison of customs he'd yet to uncover a smidgen about his partner. Angel shifted. I... It's in the past. Let's just say Konoha is my first home and leave it at that. Panther and Tiger share a look. Sure thing. Forget I asked. Now tell me boxers or briefs. The 180 has Drea letting out a boisterous laugh while Naruto gaped. Naruto. Oh, he wears, Naruto covers Angel's mouth. Keep quiet and we eat sushi tomorrow deal. Angel nods fast in glee. Akira. Why do you want to know that anyway? Oh, the clan just wants a complete profile on our summoners for the history books. She says off handily. And my underwear is important enough for the historical records? Oh yes, the toads parade around everything about their summoners, so we want to do the same next clan's convention. 
Naruto sweat dropped, Andrea interrupted. Clan's convention? Huh? You didn't know? Akira asks in disbelief. Even Naruto looked a bit surprised. He was told about the clan's convention before he returned. Well, it's basically where all the different clans that are allied together meet once a year to discuss treaties, world news, and generally brag about whose summoner is the best. So far the blasted toads win because of you, but no more. When we announce we have Naruto as our summoner, all will bow before our greatness. She cackled slightly. Naruto cleared his throat. Drea Sama can kill me with a single finger, Akira, I think I can't make them bow before you yet. Drea nodded along. No way his godson could one-up him yet. Details, details. Within a couple of years you'll be the next Sanin, and people will gossip not of toads, slugs or snakes, but of tigers and panthers. Naruto shook his head, and let it go as he popped another fish in his mouth. Kakani. Angel suddenly exclaimed. Kakashi popped in and batted the cat away, who was caught by a glaring Naruto. Senpai, she's injured. He admonished. Kakashi waved his hand. Ma, my hand must have slipped. I hear you defeated a queen wasp spider. Oh did you adopt more cats? The masked Jonin asked tightly. Nope Kakashi relaxed. They're my summons. Kakashi Senpai meet Akira the panther and Hisoka the tiger. Kakashi dropped his book. B, but I wanted you to sign the dog contract. He whispered. Have, well I was going to sign the toads actually, but Akira kind of threatened me to become the first summoner of the joint clan. Kakashi turned his lone eye and glared at the panther. You you stole my chance at a mini me. He pointed an accusatory finger at her. Akira smirked. And if I did? Whatcha gonna do tough guy? She taunted. I'll show you tough. What kind of panther is a pipsqueak? Oh. I'll have you know my pipsqueak status is a family trait. My grandfather was famous for it and his techniques. You wanna fight? Name a time and place. Guys, can't we just get along? Naruto begged. When they ignored him he banged his masked face on the table. Drea had taken this opportunity to slip out, leaving the bill next to Naruto. Both him and Angel eyed the bill with distaste. Bastard. Let's see how he likes his favorite peeping spot location told to Kirena san. Cat and boy smirked at that thought. HMPH training ground 7, felines versus canines. Akira announced. Come Naruto, let's go represent the clan. Be there in half an hour. Kakashi agreed. Naruto groaned and Akira grew a tick mark. Oh, you come willingly, or I'll show you the true meaning of pain. Somewhere in rain, a certain is a Maki Rinnegan user sneezed. No need. I'll just lose though, Kakashi Senpai outclasses me. He pointed out as they made their way towards the designated place for their little war. Angel relaxed in his arms, and would be sitting out for the fight. On their way they run into Hikaru. Chibi Koha. Kakashi Senpai is finally back. I'm free free as a bird, Hikaru cried. Let's go celebrate with sake and women. One, I'm too young for that stuff. You're legally an adult. Who is technically on call and must stay sober. And I have a spar with Kakashi Senpai in a few minutes. It's cats versus dogs. And where is this spar? Training ground 7. Why? He asked, but his older teammate was off in a shunshun. Right? Nice talking to you two. Minutes later, training ground 7. Naruto was a bit shocked when he entered the training grounds to find not only Kakashi stretching, but at least 50 jonin, and Andu around with Hikaru taking bets. Even the Hokage was slipping some money while Drea stood in the middle. Excellent, witnesses to document his defeat Akira says from atop Hisoka. The tiger didn't show an ounce of enthusiasm for the fight. But then again Naruto suspected a lifetime supply of tuna wouldn't break the facade much. The clearing goes silent moments later. Dragon appears next to Naruto and takes Angel. Win or you're on Kanahamaru duty for a month, Dragon threatened. Naruto gulped. 
Deciding then and there to get serious he motioned for the referee, Drea steps forth and avoids Naruto's gaze. If he'd look, he'd have seen the mischievous glint, though as the blonde was looking forward to his revenge. This will be an all-out spar anything but killing and maiming and no Kyubi chakra or Sharingan. The fight continues until one of the summoners are unable to fight or surrenders. Ready? Kakashi nods and pulls out a book in a bored fashion while Naruto stays still with multiple kunai in hand. Fight. The fighters shunshin further apart while Naruto throws the normal kunai near Kakashi using wind chakra to lengthen their range. They land around in what looks like a miss. Summoning Jutsu. Were the twin phrases, Naruto pumping as much chakra as he could outside of calling the bosses, and Kakashi getting his usual pack out. When the smoke settles Kakashi's dogs are growling and ready for battle and Pakun showed none of his usual easiness. Naruto meanwhile was in the middle of about 10 panthers of various sizes and 5 tigers taller than his chin. The favorite to win is Kakashi Senpai Dragon Sama Hikari comments from the sidelines. Dragon eyes his Hyuga subordinate. True, but Mouse will win, and thus make me a killing. Hikari didn't bother to argue, just silently contemplated all the money he was going to make when his Koha lost, even Hikari didn't stand a chance. Then again, as he saw Naruto among the mass of felines, he couldn't shake the feeling his judgment could be wrong. Naruto, why have you summoned the my entire joint assassination force before training with us like planned? Isn't my granddaughter enough? Hibiki questioned as he was in the middle of paperwork when he felt the pull. My apologies, Hibiki-sama, but Akira wants us to beat Kakashi-senpai and his dog summons. I don't stand a chance alone. Naruto explained. Hibiki turned his gaze to the jonin and his dogs. Very well, listen up every cat. Let's show those mutts whose boss all the assembled felines crouch down and his. He whispers the plan to Naruto and the others before raising his voice. Now. Attack. Immediately three of the smaller panthers get in a triangle formation at the center and cast a genjutsu, the others darting forward in an interlocking pattern, weaving through the dogs that sprung in a diamond formation. Naruto makes 30 clones who jump towards Kakashi. Ma, Naruto, I thought I taught you better than to jump in so quickly. He mocks while thumbing through his book. With a single hand he dispatches the clones with deadly ease, barely paying attention to the boy. One clone began throwing kunai, which Kakashi flung away while others landed near his feet. You'll have to try harder. I am a jonin after all. Suddenly Kakashi wasn't so confident when three of the kunai strewn around randomly poofed to become three of the tigers. Shit. Why do they know the kawarumi? He grumbled and whipped through hand signs. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu, and a dragon of flames rises up and roars before it hits the tigers dead on. Naruto's going to kill me. I killed his summons I thought they dodged Kakashi freaked as he saw the three burnt to a crisp. He felt reality warp though, and the tigers became nothing more than wisps of air, with Naruto clones where all the kunai were though Kakashi realized they must have been Hengus. Even his dogs were tied up with wire from the tigers and several panthers. This wouldn't have been a problem except his panther familiar, Akira, clutched his precious pre-released Ika Ika from a safe distance with explosive notes attached. The real Naruto stood next with a familiar hand sign poised. Give up, Kakashi senpai or your signed copy goes boom, and you'll have wait a month for the actual book to come out as Dreyasama gave out the others. The blonde taunted. Kakashi instantly dropped. I concede. Give me back my precious. He demanded as the other Anbu and Jonin sweat dropped. Winner, Naruto and Felines. Drea announced. Now give back his literature. The clearing was silent that Naruto, a rookie was able to beat the copy ninja no matter how underhanded. Sure thing. Check your pouch. Naruto suggested as the book disappeared in smoke. Kakashi gaped as he reached inside and did indeed feel his precious safely on his person. You you tricked me. He pointed a shaking finger at Naruto, who just gave a victory sign. Why of course. I am a ninja. 
You were so cocky that you didn't notice the three cats that hung back to hit you with a genjutsu that first made you not notice your dogs, and a second one that led you to believe my tigers were attacking. The kunai I threw were a mixture of real and henged shadow clones to throw you off and let down your guard, it worked as I want. I couldn't knock you out, but threatening you into submission. That, I can do. Kakashi hugged his book before leaving in an embarrassed manner, glad that guy wasn't there. Tell me we have that on tape. Ikara announced after the copy ninja left. Anko held a video camera high into air. Every last second. Sniggers were heard throughout the crowd. Now pay up, Ikaru. I bet on Kakashi losing so where's my money? It was then most ninja realized they'd lost a fair amount of cash all except Dragon the Hokage, Anko and Genma. Tenzo standing off to the side, shook his head as they reacted with various degrees of melancholy. Genma snorts at his fellows. Didn't you guys learn? Never bet against Naruto, it won't end well. Yeah, but he was going against Sharingan freaking Kakashi how were we supposed to know he'd try something like that? One random Jonin cried indignantly. Naruto, who had just finished bowing and thanking his summons, walked over. Oh, I don't know, maybe because I was a master at pranks and my traps are top-notch. Naruto asked. Shaking his head at the stupidity of them betting on a spar even more so was Akira's insistence on winning he takes Angel from Dragon, who was holding a sack of money. Excellent mouse. I won't have to give you Konohamari duty for a month, he praised. Naruto relaxed. Unfortunately, I don't have a punching bag tonight for my workout, and you just proved you can take on Kakashi. Let's go. W what? No fair. It was luck I won and I just got through training with my captain. Naruto begged, only for Dragon to wag his finger. Oh. What's this? You volunteer to spar with me every night this week? How kind of you mouse. Naruto got the message and shut up, the other Anbu in various degrees of vindictive pleasure after losing money. Then let's go bruises won't form themselves. Meanwhile a certain Sanin was in the doghouse as he and Tenzo were giving reports to the Hokage in his office. Drea, I know you're worried about this Akatsuki group, but messing with the seal isn't the answer. Sarutobi chided, though he himself was tempted to allow it, Konoha had dark days ahead and a fully trained Jinchuriki would act as an effective war changer and deterrent, even if most his time would be spent with his Anu squad. However messing with a seal not even Drea understood fully would be foolish, best to wait, and see what Naruto and Kurama would agree on while mastering his current output. Tenzo you and Drea will continue Naruto's Jinchuriki training like planned, while the Kumo spy attempts to find out from the Hachibai Jinchuriki about his training. So far he just let slip something about beating your darkness, but nothing specific. With any luck, I'll be able to neg. Yes, Sensei slash Hokage-sama the duo bowed together and left, leaving Sarutobi to his thoughts. He felt a familiar pre-sense, and a man he both trusted, and didn't trust hobbled through his door. Danzo, right on time, what's your update? The one-eyed mummy looked grave as he sat down. Orochimaru has agreed to give me the Hokage seat if I agree to pass on council and war intel while holding root back during the invasion. It is as we feared, Suna and Odo are now official allies and will be striking the third stage with their Jinchuriki. I suggest we assassinate the boy now and... No, if Konoha struck first beyond what we're doing and gets caught, will be unable to call on new allies Kumo is meeting with me next week to discuss an alliance against this Suna Odo plan. But I doubt they'd risk it if they caught a whiff of murdering a Jinchuriki before Suna betrays us officially. Sarutobi sighed at his old rival's disappointed look and decided to give him some good news. On the bright side, however, I am assigning Anbu to take out Suna's next shipment of weapons and bring them to us. They rely on the land of birds for their kunai and shuriken of all sizes. Sources claim next week they'll be sending the normal sea rank to escort the caravan. If Konoha steals their supplies, it will hinder them for the exams. And give Konoha the needed boost, yes. No survivors will be left either. 
since they're preparing for a war their shipment is larger than normal, enough to outfit most our shinobi. And they say you're going soft, Hirizen. Tell me though, is it true Iwa is sending three teams? Danzo asked. It would not end in their favor if Onoki was able to watch the finals. Yes, unfortunately. I abhor having to rely on your route that I ordered disbanded. But I must ask, do you have any route teams capable of preventing Iwa from advancing past the second round? Danzo looked shocked at the blatant request, but nodded. I'll have six teams ready, will they also be able to take out the Kiri team that is coming? Yes. I want only Konoha, Oo, and Suna in the finals having the two enemy cage where I can monitor them will give us a better chance. Very well then. Here is a mission for Kabuto that will allow him to overhear the Chunin patrol schedule for the exams, not that we won't alter it, of course. Sigh, thank you old friend. But even if we know everything about my old student's schemes, these old bones might not be able to weather the storms ahead. Danzo said nothing and got up, leaving without a glance back. You're right old monkey we're both frail, but I won't let Konoha remain weak like it has. After you're gone, the great tree will rise from the ashes. Plans of his betrayal towards both his allies in mind, the war hawk made his way home. However, Saratobi was not blind, and knew his rival all too well. Danzo, one way or another you will die after Orochimaru is taken care of. I only hope I can be the one to do it. It's the least I can do after my failures. The Hokage took another drag on his pipe and gazed at a certain seal carved on his desk, praying he'd be able to activate it before he died. With Kabuto, Kabuto, Yakushi hadn't survived as a spy for so long without picking up the snippets of intelligence from conversations. That's why on this routine hospital supply run the trader was careful to channel Chakra to his ears at all times as he passed groups of Chunin. Ah Chunin, the village's gossip core. They were known to spread every shred of intelligence amongst their ranks without thinking and were known to let the town slip while Kabuto was in hearing range. And to switch the guard rotations? Wasn't the zigzag pattern bad enough? I know man. Now I have to memorize the figure 8 pattern. Damn Chunin exams? Why do we have switch it up for the foreigners? Kabuto smirked and continued on his way. Stupid Chunin, now he knew what to ask Danzo or better yet just break into the Chunin archives. No wonder his master wasn't afraid of Konoha finding out. The Chunin disappeared around the corner before puffing away, revealing two Amu agents silently congratulating themselves on their way back to HQ. Next morning, Naruto's apartment. Naruto grumbled and winced at his stiff muscles while stumbling to his door that rung at 5 in the morning. If something's not on fire my intruder is dead. Opening the door with a kunai in hand ninja are paranoid after all Naruto blinked at his visitor. Ferret senpai, what a surprise. He said blandly. Ferret was a honey-colored male in his late twenties, known to be a stuck-up and rarely gave Naruto two glances. To see the masked man shifting uncomfortably in his doorway just didn't sit well with him. Okay. Who died? Mouse, I have a favor to ask. Naruto eyed him and let the man in activating his newly installed privacy seals 2.0 his last line of defense against Guy's late-night shower operas. The bushy-browed man had no sense of key or tone. At five in the morning. Yes. It's about my long-term mission with the Kurama girl. I was tasked with a mission that requires my use of speed and genjutsu. Dragon Sama told me you were village-bound for a few more weeks so babysitting a brat shouldn't be a problem. I'll only be gone a week. Naruto mentally cursed his commander, but on the outside just nodded. I take it, I'm to spend the week at the location. Who else is on the detail? Ferret visibly relaxed at his willingness. Two medic nin. The girl stays in her room most of the days, and I usually am able to train during her daily medical checkups. Dragon Sama wanted you to have this scroll with the specifics. Naruto accepted the red mission scroll and waved his senpai away. In an annoying swirl of leaves the older Anbu was gone. Damn, 
Why doesn't more ninja learn to use Shunshin without tells? Reading the scroll had him snort. So the girl can't use chakra they claim. And she's too sick to run off. Wow, what a boring job. At least Dreasama and Tenzo will be stopping by to help me channel Kurama's chakra to single parts of my body. Hey, Kurama. The girl we're guarding shares your name. Whatever, leave me be. A. Hey, what's got you grumpy? HMPH. Why couldn't he be like father? He's like every other human filled with darkness. He's unworthy of more power. Kurama closed the connection. He was wrong to get his hopes up, if Naruto's inability to conquer four tails was any indication. No human is without darkness, not since father. Sighing at his tentative friend's mood Naruto, gathered up his gear and overnight supplies. Angel was still sleeping when the blonde sealed up his Fuinjutsu scrolls he still had 50 prisoner scrolls to make. Hey, Angel. Time to get up, we have a mission. He prodded his partner, who just rolled over. Go away Naruto. Stupid mission, I can't walk far yet. It's for a week, and we'll work on Genjutsu. She still didn't move. If you don't come I'll let Hikari watch you again. That got the cat up, and she was already clambering up his leg. With a laugh Naruto picked up his partner, locking his apartment up tight for the week, and leaving Hikari a note to feed his plant and eat his food. If only he knew how to make a cold storage seal for food. Where are we going? The cat asked as Naruto combined shunshing and bursts of speed to make their way towards the mountains. He smirked under his mask. Angel was so curious once she woke up. Just a private home of a member of the Kurama clan. Angel started drooling. As in the Genjutsu clan? Yes but her powers are supposedly sealed so don't bug her about it okay? He hardened his voice a bit to get his point across. Angel puffed her cheeks and settled on his shoulders. Got it. Did you bring my tuna salad cans? All 50 of them Naruto assured her. She preened. Good. At the Korama place an hour later. We weren't expecting you for at least another hour or two. I'm Dante, and this is Ario. One of the medic nin greeted from the house's front room. His fellow ninja Ario bowed, looking exactly like his associate, but with brown eyes while Dante had black eyes. Oh, sorry, but I'm just quick I guess. I'm Mouse, and this is Angel. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Dante eyed him. It's been a while since I was in the village. I didn't know there was an Andu so short or... Young. I'm perfectly able to guard Yakimo Korama, I assure you Naruto spoke stiffly. Dante blushed in embarrassment. Excuse my rudeness, I'm sure you're more than strong enough. Anyway let me introduce you to Yakimo, she's in her room. Upstairs Dante knocked on a door with various seals that would let them know who entered and who left. Not hearing a reply Dante looked apologetic before entering, Naruto close on his heels. Inside was a girl around Naruto's age painting a picture of Kirena Yu with light going through her chest. Slightly uneased he pushed on as he heard his name. And Mouse with his ninja cat will be taking Ferret's place for the week. Yakimo-chan, look at people when they're talking to you please. Yakimo scoffed, but complied. She eyed Naruto, who was shorter than her. He doesn't look like much. Whatever, another warden in my prison. Yakimo-chan, I assure you he's not a warden. We're here for your own good. Now, why not come outside your room for breakfast? No thanks, was her curt reply. I'll start making rounds, Naruto told Dante whom he pitied. The medic looked embarrassed at the first meeting and nodded. Angel, stay with Yakimo-san, and let me know if anything happens. Angel sneers, but lets Naruto set her down on a pillow. Um, if you'd like I could help heal her leg some more Dante offered. Naruto grinned beneath his mask. That would be appreciated. Angel behave. The hell cat wrinkled her nose again. Fine, and mouse. 
Walking outside to create a patrol route for him and his clones Naruto hid his amusement when his chakra-laced ears heard Angel's failed attempts to start a conversation. Chapter 11. Yakimo's Place, Five Days into Naruto's Shift. Naruto and Angel padded along the forest floor surrounding the Kurama hideout, moon a ghostly orb above. Every trap was set and unactivated and his clones reported no disturbances. So why was all his hair up straight? Angel was tense as well below him. Nicking his thumb with a kunai he runs through some hand seals. Summoning Jutsu, he whispers. Akira appears, serious when she takes in her summoner's posture. Do you sense that? Naruto signed. He taught Akira and Hisoka how to read his signs well, sort of. They were still learning but picked it up faster than him. Akira closed her eyes in concentration and nodded. Weird I know. That aura. And it. It's active under the full moon. Kurama muttered, his first contact in days. And it. Naruto asked. Figure it out but hint, it's not a danger to you. Yet. Just go back to your pointless guarding. Naruto scowled but relaxed, even if Kurama was being an ass he wouldn't lead Naruto into trouble. Turning to an intense-looking Akira, the blonde shook his head. False alarm, sorry. You can go back, I'll summon you for sushi after my rotation, in two days he promised. Akira grinned, as she shakily translated it, and headed back home. He looks at Angel. We're done here, the shadow clones will wake us if needed. The tired duo heads inside to their temporary lodgings in the room above Yakimo's a hatch poised to open for quick entrance through the floor. Naruto lay on his futon, still in complete uniform, pondering his charge. Yakimo Korama just turned 13 15 days ago, parents dead in a house fire, and her genjutsu sealed away. Her eyes are so empty why? It bugged him to see someone his age be so depressed, and yet so angry with everything. Kukuku Naruto bolts upright with a kunai in hand. A mavalolent chakra pulses below him, and in an instant he's in Yakimo's room with the medics. Please stop. Mother, father. Don't hate me, she whimpers though it becomes clear she's asleep. Dante administers another drug before turning to Naruto. Sorry mouse sometimes Yakimo-chan's chakra seal activates, especially on a full moon. Nothing to worry about. Naruto tilts his head. Is it an id, Dante? The medics stiffen and turn cold. It would be best if you drop it. There should be no more disturbances, go back to sleep, Naruto wants to argue, but technically Dante was in charge so he shunshins back through the open hatch. Hey, what was that? It was scary, scarier than when you use Kurama's chakra angel whispered while ducked under a table. He'd ordered her to stay back before he left. Something dark, something no one wants to talk about it seems. It's probably the reason Yakimo is up here. Anyways, let's get to sleep. Tomorrow, I have to compress the chakra in my fingers. For the last five days Naruto would leave clones along with his captain's henged wood clones before going into the woods nearby and setting up a chakra barrier for three hours, practicing narrowing down where Kurama's chakra filtered through. So far he was succeeding but the strain left burns, if maintained longer than a few minutes Naruto suspected Kurama wasn't as free with his chakra as before, but didn't dare ask. Next day. Naruto watched as Yakimo sat on a swing outside in her bath robe, a thick loathing set in stone on her pasty face. He technically was supposed to be an unseen shadow, but Yakimo reminded him of himself when he was younger she just didn't hide it like he did. Why are you so angry? He asked from a branch. The girl scowled up at him. Why not? I've been locked away and my parents died what's there to be happy about? Well. You're alive, aren't you? He questioned with a shrug. Really? He didn't like those who refused to move on at least she had parents at one point. HMPH, and for how long? How long before I'm ordered to be put to sleep? To stop existing. No, there is nothing to be happy for. Just be invisible like the other andes that come here, unseeing and uncaring. She turned her head. Naruto didn't know what to do, so he further broke protocol. 
His captain would have an aneurysm if he ever found out. Are you allowed visitors? Yes, but no one comes they treat me like a plague. Then, I'll come visit. He said after a moment. Yakimo eyed the blonde in suspicion. Why would you do that? What could you get out of it? Naruto shrugged. I don't know, a friend perhaps. Or nothing at all. Either way, may I come visit you sometimes? He landed on his feet, and lazily walked back next to his charge. As she stepped into her room the pale girl paused. You can come. But don't think it means we're friends. She huffed before slamming the door. Naruto stood frozen with a smile. Of course not. Why? Why what? You promised to see the girl. Why would you, a cold-blooded killer do that? I am not cold-blooded, and it's because I can help keep her from being completely alone. Karama roared. Why do you care Naruto is a Maki? Your heart has darkness, so what does another creature's feeling mean to you? Or do you deny your own black heart? Karama wasn't expecting an answer. Stupid fox, of course my heart has darkness everyone's does, especially those in the shinobi life. You admit it therefore you're tainted you cannot help the girl. That's where you're wrong. It's human fate to have darkness. Then stop pretending to be good. But, it's human nature to fight against the darkness and come out on top. That's what it means to be human, to still be decent despite your past and pains. Karama was stunned at what he heard, but slammed against his cage. You don't understand, he was pure why can't you be? Just. Leave. And the fox cut off the connection, leaving Naruto to his thoughts as he went on patrol. Next day, Ferret arrives back. You promise. Yakimo stated and held out a pinky. Naruto nods and offers his up as they hook them in a promise. I promise it won't be for a while or that often with the Chunin exams coming up, but I'll make it out here occasionally. Like I care, she declares in a 180 and stalks inside. Ferret arrives as the door closes and turns towards his younger comrade with bandaged arms and neck. Thank you mouse, I'll take it from here. Dragon Sama wants you in his office tomorrow at 5 am. Great. No breaks for me. Naruto hung his head and set off through the trees to catch dinner and some relaxation. Meanwhile, Iwagakure. Diderah cackled as he flew away from his battle with Onoki, his new hands already an extension of himself. That will show him to deny me stupid Onoki trying to make me a future cage, and then saying I couldn't get that kinjutsu until I took the hat on. HMPH to be a cage is a desk job and not enough art. Though, where should I go next? Diderah voiced his thoughts aloud as his bird soared. Hmm, I know. Fire Country could use some explosions to match its name on. The new missing ninja altered his course with a grin. Onoki looked on in annoyance as his ex-apprentice flew away with a kinjutsu he was using as a bartering chip to retire. Around him buildings burned, and so far 20 were injured from their battle, though none died. Still, Dedera defected, and with his rank and crime, he'd be branded an S-rank criminal. Dedera, you were always too crazy for your own good. I shiver at the thought of you joining our enemies. Dragon's office, next day, crack of dawn. You summoned me, Dragon Sama. Naruto stood at attention as his commander sat back with a random piece of paperwork. The man looked up after a moment and threw Naruto a scroll. Your squad members Wolf and Cat just returned from apprehending Sana's shipment of weapons and has increased our supply blaming missing ninja. However, Kanaha's armory plant is where? He looked up expectantly. Near the graveyard sir, the most dead piece of land in our country besides the QB ceiling site. It's southwest towards bird country. It's a target of Suna, isn't it? Most likely, yes. Drea taught you shock tags and other simple security seals this past week. You will be traveling to the plant today to set up various traps and seals to prevent any theft. Meanwhile, your captain is already there rerouting the paths leading towards the plant. You have three days there along with two days travel time. 
Drea will arrive on the last day to check over your work, so don't mess up. The seals and instructions in that scroll will create a barrier seal that you can link to the head Jonin there. Yes Dragon Sama Naruto turned to leave and pick up Angel from the locker room on his way out. Oh, and Mouse. One of those prisoner scrolls saved an Anbu on the Suna mission. Good work, Dragon said in a monotone, but Naruto could tell it held a smidgen of pride. No problem anything for my comrades. Your shunching and water jutsi still suck though, he added on. I love you too, Commander. Naruto said dryly and left before Dragon could ruin the moment even more. The Graveyard 23 hours later. Combining endless shunching and chakra channeling Naruto and Angel arrived at the plant by 4am. Activating his Anbu tattoo and giving the hand signal the blonde and cat are let into the main building smoke pillowing out of the towers in the background. The graveyard battleground of the Seven Tails Jinchuriki and Hiruzen Saratobi in the Second War was nothing but rock land for half a mile radius, and resembled earth rather than fire due to Saratobi's infamous reshaping of his battlefields. The Jinchuriki had died in the battle, and the resulting pulse of demonic chakra prevented any greenery from growing for years, and the plant's presence kept it that way in the present. Surrounding the area was a dense forest with a single well-kept path that enemy shinobi not used to Konoha terrain would use to judge the way to the armory. To counteract this, Tenzo was busy playing god with the earth and rerouting it to a fake plant really an Andu outpost more than equipped to deal with Suna sabotage efforts. Inside waited three other Anbu in standard black robes who Naruto hadn't met before and the head Jonin Kakeri Nohara, a man with bored brown eyes and an unassuming face even his hair was a muted brown that stuck flat. Anbu agent, code name Mouse here to set up defensive measures, Naruto greeted neutrally and bows slightly. Takeri bows back and clears his throat. Mouse, yes we weren't expecting you for another three hours at least. No matter, you have four hours of rest. After that you will be under Falcon here, an Anbu that vaguely looked like a bird inclined her head in hellos Anbu weren't too enthusiastic in greetings. Well, unless you were Hikaru. Or Naruto, on a sugar rush. That too. Where you'll be given access to the armory to strengthen our security. Naruto bowed even as Takeri turns abruptly and heads away. Naruto's fellow Black Ops members stand impassively staring him down. Naruto stared back. These were some of the Andy sent on long-term assignments, much like Ferret. Contrary to what most civilians and foreign ninja believed, Kanaha's Anbu operated throughout all the continent undercover, maintaining order and running the spy network. It was common for Anbu to be given assignments like this one low combat, high importance, but quiet for six months or more to wind down after being in the force for longer than normal a way to still be useful and stay sharp but prevent breakdowns from pressure. Like Itachi Uchiha. Naruto shivered when he recalled the story Yugao had told him about the prodigy that tarnished squad Ro's name. Welcome, you know I am Falcon, these two are walrus and penguin sleeping quarters are down the hall. Falcon signed. Naruto inclined his head, curious as to why they didn't talk as this was basically the equivalent of off-duty, but followed suit. I look forward to working with you. Naruto signed back and headed there. Angel, who kept quiet, glanced back at our new co-workers with puffed out cheeks. I don't like them, Angel declared as they lay down on the stiff bunk. Naruto chuckled. And why not? They haven't done anything. Exactly. I like Ro better even Akara is preferable to these cardboard guys Naruto quirked an eyebrow. Cardboard guys? Yeah you know, because they have no personality. When will we be back with our own squad? I don't know Angel soon though, I hope. He didn't say it, but he too missed being with his friends on missions. Just then his captain stumbled in and face planted on his respective bunk with a groan. Hey captain. Naruto turned his face slightly. Tenzo just waved a limp hand. Wood captain. You're here. Angel soared over the distance and landed on the man's back eliciting a hiss. Go. Away. Please. Angel just purred and stretched out for a nap. Next day. Why did you summon me here? 
Akira demanded from atop Hisoko when she found herself not called to a poker game Naruto's apartment or place of dining, but in a rock wasteland with a factory. There weren't any enemies around to beat up either. You wanted to be summoned well, I need you two's help. Take these seals to the top of the smoke towers and place them there they apparently dissipate the smoke more to make it less visible. Akira scowled once she translated. It was bad enough her summoner insisted on signing as much as possible even when not needed, but to ask her to dirty herself for a chore. Hell no, get a shadow clone, or better yet you do it. Naruto winced as he really didn't want to do it and his clones could fail by running out of chakra while climbing and he really didn't want to explain to Drea why his dissipation seals fluttered away on the wind. An idea struck after a few moments of panic. Then I guess Pakon was right Panthers really don't like high places. I understand, I'll make it his hand is stopped by Akira tackling him down and grabbing the bag with the stack of tags in her jaws and slings it over her body. She hops back onto Ahsoka and glares at Naruto. I'll show that mutt not to underestimate me. Let's go Hisoka. They speed off while Naruto and Angel sniggers. That was priceless. The cat managed between laughs. Naruto agreed. Let's get to work Falcon is waiting to walk us through the perimeter for trap setting. Does this mean we have to come back a lot to fix them? Angel grumbled in distaste. Naruto shook his head. No. They'll have these and we keep them in working order after I teach them how and others will come to change them. Now be silent, I have a feeling talking is out with Falcon. Final day. Turns out Naruto was right. Falcon was the silent type, not even Walrus and Penguin have heard Falcon's voice and the three had been on this mission for seven months. Even sign was out unless a pointed question was asked. As Naruto double-checked the barrier set up and other measures of defense before Drea showed up he rolled his eyes at the thought of how bland Falcon was. God help him if they were ever put into a squad together, or ran another mission. Ah Mouse, I would like to thank you, Takeri smiled at him. The man was bland but kind and Naruto already liked him he reminded him of Tenzo, who had headed out yesterday. Thank you, it was no trouble. I also made these up for you. Naruto passed off a scroll containing different seals for the plant. The blonde had made them up when he saw how sparse the place was in the tag department. Takeri curiously channeled chakra into the matrix, and over a hundred seal tags ranging from larger explosives to privacy seals, and even a duo of prisoner scrolls for an injured comrade just in case popped out. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Most of those I had made already and I just added to it. This costs a small fortune. Now, the supplies are a fraction of the cost, and I get a 30% discount on everything related to the creation of Fuinjutsu anyways. Plus, my commander would want our armory to be well protected, and those might either save your lives or at least make them easier out here. He motioned towards the privacy seals so I hope you enjoy them. Dragon Sama will reimburse me anyways. Takeri seals them back up and bows. Thank you anyway mouse. After a few moments Takeri heads back inside, leaving Naruto and Angel alone to their checks. Oh ho, good work Gaki Drea chirps from behind. It takes all of Naruto's self-control to not jump or scream, but instead turn towards his tutor. Angel didn't have that self-control. Hiss. Don't do that, she orders an amused Drea. The Sanin just chuckled. Is the kitty cat afraid? Drea teased. Angel continued to glower while Naruto face pawned. Drea Sama, please tell me you've been verifying my work so we can go home. It was poker night tomorrow, and he wanted to get back in time to take the metaphorical candy from the invited Chunins and arrogant clan heads scheduled to show up. Yeah, yeah, Gaki, I checked it all out, and we're good to go. Art is an explosion. Chapter 12 At the Amory Plant. Dedero was just going to keep flying over the building in the middle of nowhere as there wasn't many around to appreciate his art, and he really wasn't a mad bomber as most of Uo always claimed him to be, but then he spotted the infamous Drea the Toad Sage. The thrill of such a fight had the ex-explosion core captain drooling. 
grinning at the fact that he could battle and then escape after he had his fun, Diderot shouted down at the man who would learn to appreciate his art. And the random Andy joining him. Art is an explosion. Diderot gave a cheeky grin as Drea spotted him. As an introduction he released some clay spiders. Landing on the ground nearby, he shouted Katsu. And small explosions littered the ground. He didn't aim for the building he recognized as the armory because while Diderot was cocky, he wasn't stupid. Konoha might appear weak and forgiving to the civilian side, but Iwa knew. Konoha was a sleeping giant. If the plant got damaged in his fun, Diderot would find himself being chased relentlessly by the strongest of the five. So, he'd just lead them away and then make everything go kablu. Turning his bird slightly he flew off, smirking when the pair followed him dodging his creations along the way. With Naruto and Drea. He's mocking us, Dre growled in annoyance while batting away one spider before it set off. Naruto rolled his eyes behind his mask at the stupidity of Dre's decision in the situation, following a potentially deadly enemy while letting the other Andy stay behind as me and the Gaki can handle it minus ludicrous. I Dedera, will show you chumps the true meaning of art on. Was the distant call once they were a distance away from the plant. Their formerly mystery assailant began lazily circling them moments later, and the bombs were starting to become more deadly. Covering Drea's behind while the man failed at making his few long-range jutsu hit, a crazy idea hit. Drea Sama vault me up, Angel, let's try our wind combination too, Naruto spoke and motioned for Angel to hang on. Wait, what? Drea sputtered as he himself was about to summon Gamabanta, but it was too late, Naruto channeled a burst of chakra to his legs and ran up to the Sanin, planting his feet on the back, before leaping high in the air. Once the Amba reached a respectable height he went through multiple seals. Wind style, great breakthrough and a wild blast of wind was released towards the soaring clay bird. Angel, from atop Naruto's head, filled her lungs and blew. A steady but weak stream of fire barreled into the chakra-enhanced wind gust, the flames spreading and managing to hit the bird on the tip. As the bird faltered, Diderot toppled off and his creation turned towards the human cat pair. Normally, L cat fire techniques were ineffective until adulthood, and angels were worse than most. Fire took a chunk of chakra, and cats never had as much as humans. However, when a Hellcat partners with a wind user especially one who could create a torrents of wind with a high D rank jutsu that weakness is nullified. Ha! Take that pony-tailed man, Angel crooned as their opponent fell towards the earth. Problem was so were they. Shit Naruto cursed. The only option to remain unhurt would be focus a great breakthrough at the ground then create shadow clones to catch their slightly slow decent. Of course, Dira's bird had other plans than to allow that. It dive-bombed them and Naruto's eyes widened when it started glowing. Katsu. Dieter screamed and Naruto twisted his body while snatching Angel to his chest, he might die, but Angel could survive the blast. Summoning several shadow clones they piled on him to slightly cushion the attack. Waiting for the pain. That never came. What the? Naruto muttered as his body was yanked away by a slimy townge. Can't have my apprentice die too early. I Drea the Valiant will take it from here. This crazed small fry is of no importance. Drea thumped his chest from atop an oversized purple toad. Both cat and boy sweat dropped and Diderot followed soon landing on a clay animal several feet away. Oi don't diss my art. The bomber said indigently. Try this on. My C2 dragon. As Diderot lands on a pile of clay animals, he puts a wad of clay between both hands. Soon, a massive dragon forms and roars, Diderot hopping on and aiming its snout towards Drea and Naruto. The dragon opens its mouth, and smaller versions burst forth in pursuit of the two. Other, smaller dragons emerge from the tail. Gaki, you and Miss Kitty distract those creatures, while I take out the user. Drea ordered seriously for the first time since Diderot mocked them into following. Naruto nodded and made several clones that took off around the field. Oh girly man, I find your art so childish. 
Naruto called and taunted cheekily. Theodora roared. You little brat go, my children, turn the unbeliever into Arton. Angel, hold on. Naruto said as the dragons focused on them. Drawing his kakuto, he cut several smaller bombs in half and rebounded off backwards in a single-handed handspring before they explode. Landing several meters, he continues dodging. Four medium-sized dragons congregate on the pair. At the same time the ground erupts from a hidden explosive. Yes. Taste my beautiful art, because all art is an explosion. Katsu. The four go off as one and only a Kawarumi with a shadow clone stops Naruto and Angel from becoming barbecue. Hey, you okay? Angel asked after her ears stopped ringing. Naruto grunted and held his side. I should be fine, it's just a few ribs, but I hope Drea does whatever he has planned soon. He muttered. Drea and his toad had disappeared sometime during Naruto's distraction. Creating several shadow clones all of the Naruto run through the hand seals wind style, great breakthrough create a barrier from other clay bombs. Hundreds of booms surround the makeshift wind barrier. Angel covers her ears and Naruto shifts, ready for more. Theodora chuckles next to his now tiny leftover dragon. You survived, eh? Then it's time to a barrier rose up to stop the chakra flow and the crazy man collapsed in a heap. Drea posing triumphantly from behind. Never fear, my young apprentice. The great Drea the gallant just saved the day. No one can stand against this handsome devil. Naruto rolled his eyes from behind his mask and limped over. You could have ended that before it even started Drea Sama the blonde groused. Now I have to replace my armor, and Angel's ears are damaged vet bills aren't cheap you bastard. You're paying for it. He demanded and pointed an accusatory finger at Drea who was attaching several seals to Deidara's back. Shut it, Gaki. Sure, I could have knocked him out as soon as he landed, but making seals capable of shutting down the explosion release takes time. It's not my fault you can't dodge worth a damn, Drea said flippantly. Naruto prepared a comeback when the other Andu landed around them. We have secured the base. Falcon signed. Orders, Dreyasama? Keep on alert. Me and the Gaki have this bigger Gaki under control. My spy network just got word of his defection, he'll be taken in for interrogation. Falcon nodded at Drea's words. Safe journeys back Falcon replied, and the three disappeared once again. Naruto sighed as their chakra signatures left. Couldn't even say bye to me? Jerks. Shut it, human. Your whining annoys me. Sorry Korama hey. You're sounding better. Naruto thought happily. His sort of almost friend spoke to him without prompting in an almost civil tone. TSK. That fight was pathetic. Naruto sweat dropped. Maybe we're not improving after all. Toss me a prisoner scroll. Drea's voice interrupted his musings. In a fluid motion Naruto threw the sage the roll and Deidara's body vanished inside. Surprised, Naruto caught it back. I'm sending you back before me in case this was a premeditated attack. I'll add a few more barrier seals and clean up the evidence before meeting you in Konoha. Are you okay to travel? Drea looked mildly concerned at the side. Yes, I'll be fine. Naruto assured before holding out his hand. What? Pay up. If you were quicker then Angel wouldn't have been hurt. With a growl Drea tossed a purse of Ryo. That should cover the cost. You know, you're too protective of that cat how do you expect her to be a partner if she can't fight? I thought Hellcats were supposed to be masters in combat. Naruto bristled as he unsealed some bandages and wrapped Angel's ears. She isn't ready for this level of combat. One day she'll be stronger than any other of her kind. But until then, I'll protect her. Now, good day and don't goof off on your way home, he spoke curtly before using several consecutive shunshins away. Konoha, later. Naruto landed in front of the gates the next evening, ribs still fusing together. Damn, why can't they heal faster? He mentally grumbled. Kotetsu noticed the Anu entry? but didn't try to make light conversation when he noticed Naruto carrying Angel. 
What happened? Kotetsu asked, spotting the blood stains seeping through the bandages, and Naruto's slightly burnt and ripped armor. Explosion its burst eardrum and a damaged one, she'll be fine after a visit to Hana. Naruto clipped while signing in. Honestly he would have sedated his partner, and put her into a scroll, but the cat glowered at him when he suggested it through sign. She was quite adamant to stay awake and alert, and Naruto didn't want to incite her ire later for such a minor injury. Oh well good. Say, will you be at the next poker game in a couple of days? Gate duty is dull enough and watching you wipe the floor with newbies is always a joy. Er. Maybe Naruto said after a moment. Though Kotetsu and Izuo were eternal chumin they were actually jonin level in strength the village couldn't trust weaklings to guard the gates. However, putting on a militaristic view didn't attract tourists and warn potential enemies. So, having two laid-back whining, but deceptively weak chunin at the desk protected the village and kept Kanaha's image of peaceful intact. Most jonin recognized this and put up with the pair for the various bar nights, poker games, and occasional party. Izumo tried to add his two cents in but Naruto had already took off towards T and I before the first word was spoken. Five minutes and a surge of his chakra for identification later Naruto was admitted to Kanaha's interrogation and intelligence building. Figuring Ibiki would be the better choice to keep Theodora alive during interrogation he knocked on the infamous man's door. Come in a gruff voice commanded. Peeping in he saw that dragon was there as well, and Naruto stepped in quietly and stood at attention. Oh mouse. What are you doing here? Ibiki questioned. Naruto took out the scroll. Dreyasama and I captured a recently missing ninja, Theodora of Iwa, after he arrived at the armory plant. Dedera has the explosion release and kinjutsu that augments it. Dreyasama sealed away both his chakra and the kinjutsu after a brief battle. Dragon hunt. Tell me everything, Dragon ordered this can count as your oral report. Two hours later. Hannah had healed Angel's ears rather easily, though not before lecturing the pair on letting their guard down when in confrontations. Now the pair trudged up the stairs towards bed well, really Naruto trudged. Angel just snoozed on his head when Kakashi opened his door. Ma, Naruto, back from your mission. He asked with an eye smile. Naruto glowered. No, I was just out for an evening stroll. He deadpanned while pointing to his uniform. Oh, then you won't mind training my genin tomorrow right? Great thanks, all the Jonin sensei are holding a joint training tournament tomorrow at noon in training ground 3, and you can run the traps course. Hell no, Naruto said immediately. I'm off duty tomorrow train your own brats senpai. Ma, ma, you are supposed to be helping to train them. I'll be away tomorrow, so thanks for the favor, Johnny. And he puffed away, no doubt to re-enter his apartment from the window. Sai why me? Will I ever get a day off? Naruto pulled at his hair. Entering his apartment he sets Angel down on the couch and plops down on the floor to undo his armor. A deep breathing from his room has a kunai already charged with chakra in his grasp. Creeping towards the door Naruto slides it open, eating the darkened room for intruders. What he found though? Hikaru. Get the hell out of my apartment. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting, and also check out my other playlists hope you would like them too.